Carson. On the show today, two stars from the new romantic comedy on Netflix, Wedding Season, on the importance of authentic South Asian representation. And there's no crying in baseball, right? Well, dropping this week, a reboot of a classic, A League of Their Own. Actress Darcy Carden spoke to the third hour about what to expect. And any Spy Kids fans out there? Well, we've got a fun flashback interview with Antonio Banderas ahead of his 62nd birthday. But first, Jacob Soboroff has today's Pop Start Headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do it. Here we go. First up, Keenan Thompson, the SNL legend, just landed his next big gig hosting this year's Emmy Award. All right. Oh, yep. right. So the award-winning comedian set to take the stage at the Microsoft Theater out in L.A. next month. It's going to be Keenan's first time hosting the star-studded show, although he is a six-time nominee, one-time Emmy winner. He is no stranger to the event. Uh, Thompson's only getting started with hitting some major career milestones this fall. He is set to return to SNL for his 20th wow. season. I know, That's it's nuts. Amazing. So that would cement his status, of course, as the longest-running cast member wow. on the show. Longer than anybody in the That's history of SNL. Incredible, incredible, and well-deserved. Yes, yes sir. Nobody more versatile yep. mm -hmm. or talented. Than and a nice Thompson. guy. I was just going to say, an off-camera. So the, nice. The classiest yeah. of acts. I think he just got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame yes. a few yeah. weeks ago. Well-deserved. Keenan's having yeah. a well-deserved well-deserved moment, if well, you will. No doubt about it. And uh, so, Keenan, kudos to you. You can watch the 74th Emmy Awards September 12th. That'll be right here on NBC. Uh, and now to Dolly Parton. Mark your calendars, guys. August 9th will forever be known as Dolly Parton Day, at least if you live in Ohio. Uh, on Tuesday, Governor Mike DeWine in Ohio declared the 9th as an official holiday for the music icon. She was celebrated with a special luncheon at the Ohio State campus where they honored Dolly for her work with children's literacy. Uh, literacy. If you can believe it, she is spreading the gift of reading with the Imagination Library. She's been doing this for almost three decades a program that I started in honor of my dad uh, 27 years ago now I think wow. and actually my dad and I thought that this would be actually something that would go maybe a county maybe two or three counties over we had no idea when we started this that it was going to become what it has become and we're hoping by the end of the year we're going to be like over 200 million books in honor of her dad, she said. How That's cool is awesome. that? Amazing. And of course, in typical Dolly fashion, she broke out her colorful guitar. She treated the lucky audience to a performance of a few songs. Listen. My coat of many colors that my mama made for me. Made only from rags, but I wore it so proudly. And although we had no money, I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors Mama made for me. I want more. Unbelievable. Oh, Cheers good. to Dolly. Cheers to Dolly's day. Good. Every day should yeah. be Dolly's yeah. Dolly part of this. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, coming up next, Michael Buble. Here's the story. A few months back, Michael thought he was going to surprise a London choir by popping into their rehearsal but he had no idea that the gospel group was learning to sing Bring It On Home To Me from his newest oh. album. Yep, watch this. Bring it on home to me. This is the best day ever. You know I'll always be a slave. Tell them, baby. Love that guy. What oh, I would do to sing like that, man. Oh, oh man. Who so, knew Buble could do gospel? Oh, I mean, listen, he's a talented, yeah. talented musician. Nothing he can't do. The yeah. only guy who was in on this, so it was a double surprise, was the choir master. His name's Nathaniel. And after they were done, Buble took a moment to thank the choir for lending their voices to such a special song. Oh, I'm almost oh, sorry. I kept saying, I'm never going to, you know, I'm doing all TV shows and I'm doing all the stuff. and. I'm doing pop, the pop songs of Dawson. and I was like, how am I ever gonna make a moment of this and let people see how beautiful this is, you know? 
And this is the moment. You guys gave me the moment. Oh, wow. that was fantastic. I'm really touched by it. I was going to say, he's been here a lot, never seen him react no. that yeah. way. Yeah. But you can feel, you know, especially with that soul behind him, it just probably just felt so good. Yeah. And he loved, you know. Jacob, this is where you use your pop star platform to invite Michael Buble and his choir oh, to come to, to sing studio. Yes. Yes. Mr. Buble, yes, yes, you heard Mr. Melvin. Let's do this thing. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's come been a long time good. since he's been Bring here. Bring the choir. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. All right, how about next one? Garth Brooks, the country star, is lending his legendary pipe to a surprising new project. Garth is stepping into the world of nature documentaries for National Geographic's new series. It's called America's National Parks. As part of a five-night event for National Parks Week, Brooks will use his Grammy-winning voice to actually narrate stories from inside our country's most iconic landscapes. Listen cool. to this. The Grand Canyon. A chasm 277 miles long. Even in winter, what appears barren supports life. A female mountain lion shelters from the cold with her eight-month-old daughter. She can't rest for long with an extra mouth to feed. Oh my goodness, I, I love it so this. much. So good. Oh my God. I love that. There have been so many good National Parks documentaries. Yeah. I cannot wait That's actually to one. watch this one. America's National Parks premieres on August 29th on Nat Geo. And finally, Jennifer Hudson. Okay. Is there anything, anything that the EGOT winner cannot do. Yesterday, Jay Hud stepped up to the mound. Hey! City. She threw out the ceremonial woo, first pitch right. at the Royals-White Sox game. And check this out. So the ball soars. You saw it over home plate, right down the middle. She celebrates with a little well-deserved victory dance. And Al well. can tell us, because yeah. I think you've done this. Yes. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Pitch, but what right? she did was she oh, arced it. This is okay, from five years ago. Cue the there video. Just a little I bit. Mean, out. Yeah. Well, I just had shoulder surgery. <laughs> I mean, close. not bad, though. I mean, you know. They're uh, important. Not, still not as bad as 50 Cent. No. No, that, that, was, that was pretty so, good. That's so good. <laughs> Nothing's as bad as the 50 toss. <laughs> That's your pop star, Everybody guys. goes and looks it up on YouTube. And there is more to know today. This is Popstar Plus, after all. First up, the Royals. As a member of the world's most famous family, it makes sense that Prince George would get his fair share of invites to some pretty big events. But one little girl who sent the young royal an invitation to her sixth birthday party actually received a sweet response from George's parents, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. In a tweet reported by Hello Magazine, the girl's mother shared her RSVP note from a royal staff member. It read, their royal highnesses were extremely grateful for your kind invitation. Having given careful consideration to the possibilities, however, I very much regret that their royal highnesses reluctantly feel they have to decline. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed your birthday. Okay, so she didn't get a royal visit, but a personalized letter is a pretty cool surprise. And finally, Kate McKinnon, the former SNL star, stopped by The Tonight Show to catch up with Jimmy Fallon. Looking back at her iconic run at Saturday Night Live, she opened up about what went into all the crazy hair and makeup that transformed Kate into her many famous characters like Anthony Fauci and Jeff Sessions. And you'll never guess what she did with those prosthetics after the show. I started, just for fun, collecting the prosthetic items. Noses and ears and things like that. And I started making little art pieces with them in my office. Like I said to a writer friend, like, oh, come get your Gatorade. It's in my office. And then I sort of had done, um, had made that. Piece of art. Just a bouquet of, of noses and ears. Yeah. And then I said to one of the writers, so just go, I left something on the piano. Can you go find it? And then... <laughs> I mean, that's all Fauci and noses. Those are noses. Those okay. are that's beautiful, right? It is safe to say Kate will be missed around Studio 8H on and off screen. And those are your Pop Start Plus headlines. Still to come, we're going to dive into the new romantic comedy wedding season. Stay with us. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
the day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. The new film Wedding Season depicts what happens when two Indian Americans pretend to date during a summer of nuptials. Stars Pallavi Sharda and Suraj Sharma spoke to our fourth hour's Donna Farazin about highlighting South Asian storytelling. I'm really excited for the two of you. I want to get right into wedding season. Did this movie hit close to home for you two? Definitely after we shot the film, I started to notice things more. I was like, oh, yeah, people are getting married. People are stressed about this stuff. Like A lot of my friends are now married. All my, most of my exes from a previous lifetime are all married. I went to four That's weddings huge. in the last yeah. five months. I know the feeling. Yeah. Four weddings in the last five months. Four weddings in the last, all Indian weddings, all crazy. Pallavi, how would you describe wedding season? I would describe it as a lens, as a really beautiful lens into one aspect of a very broad archetype that is South Asian culture as it exists in, you know, diasporic communities. And as I said, as a lens through which we can create intercultural understanding and empathy. I think as someone who grew up Indian Australian, I'm very cognizant of the fact that we're often expected to be obedient and compliant and quiet in the face of the host society, so to speak. And I think that wedding season is incredibly empowering as far as a woman who takes up space and starts to believe that she is able to do that within her family, within her personal relationships, within the workplace. Yeah, I just think it's like a, it's a beacon. It's a beacon for what we ought to be able to do in terms of living through love and not fear. Harvey. Literally the only reason I agreed to meet you here was so that my mom would stop posting my profile online. Mm -hmm. So this, us. Is never gonna happen? Never gonna happen. How can you be so sure of that? Because our parents set this up. What drew you to your roles and how similar are you to your characters? Well, what drew me to Asha is many things i will say first of all the film as a whole i think has a really important part to play in the conversation around you know breaking down the binary of us and them in you know the modern lexicon of what it is to exist in society and i think that this film goes a long way towards the actualization of this idea that we are all one. And it just is by shining a light on the normalcy of a family who lives in Jersey, who happens to be Indian um, or American of Indian origin. And then Asha's just a cool cat. She's a maverick, just like me. <laughs> and for me, it was just like finding a project where you're suddenly surrounded by South Asians in the creative space. Mm. It just rarely ever happens. It, it never happens. If you're of any minority and you're, let's just say, an actor for now, you find yourself feeling quite alone. You're like, all right, I'm doing this alone again, you know? To suddenly realize the bigger picture and how many people have given their souls and life to this is a joy. And getting to work on this, specifically on this project, was a dream. And obviously with her, it was fun. It was a learning really experience. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. If we join forces, we won't have to deal with all of this. I'm not interested in a pretend relationship, okay? Do this for your parents. At least until wedding season is over. What was it like bringing this experience, you know, to life and this project to life behind the scenes for you? 
Oh my goodness. It was, you know, first of all, I guess if I actually now sit back and and look at the journey that I've been on and the fact that I dreamt of being an actress when I was a very, I was probably two or three when I said I want to grow up and be an actress. And the actualization of that is kind of unbelievable, even statistically speaking. So to be a part of that beginning phase is something that I think people like myself and Saroj have been working towards for a long time. And now to have someone like yourself even recognize that and ask that question, it just means that it's working and we are moving the needle forward and it's the work is being seen. We are being seen. We are representing others that will be seen and we break down the monolithic stereotypes of what it is to be a person of color of South Asian descent on screen but also in the broader community mm -hmm. um and i think that's ultimately the aim of storytelling and one thing to that is that you know many times it's like okay wow you're a south asian actor like on screen you must really be changing things you know the real change happens behind the camera and then in front of the movie screen so in that regard this was a gem mm -hmm. being surrounded by all these South Asians who have been at different stages in their lives, mm -hmm. all with a common struggle and with this team behind it, you know, right off the bat, there was intention with this as intention and that hits deep. Well, and in, in thinking about, you know, the authenticity of this storytelling and also in the representation, the South Asian representation behind the scenes and in front of the camera, what do you hope audiences take away from this movie? Who is this movie for? Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> and if anything I want to be taken away is a little bit of understanding. Mm -hmm. It's like, how am I supposed to accept or understand this group mm -hmm. if I've never communicated, if I don't have any insight into their lives, if I don't see the normalcy, the common struggles, it's through things like this. It's through conversation, whether it be conversation through media, conversation in person. That's what, if I hope the people take away a lot of fun, because this is fun, and a little bit of understanding. Yeah, that's what breeds empathy. Thanks to Pallavi and Suraj for hanging out with us, and you can catch Wedding Season now on Netflix. Up next, Darcy Carden breaks down a brand new take on A League of Their Own. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! 
We're back. 1992's A League of Their Own is a beloved movie filled with quotable lines and big stars. Of course, it centers on a group of women who fought to play baseball during World War II with a cast that includes Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, and Madonna. Well, now a reboot is up to bat featuring a new cast of characters, including one played by Darcy Carden. She spoke with the third hour all about it. We are so excited because this morning we are catching up with a fantastic actor, Darcy Carden. She earned an, an Emmy nomination for her role as Janet in NBC's The Good Place. It was a great show, by the way. Awesome. Now Darcy is stepping up to the plate in Prime Video's reimagined version of A League of Their Own. She plays Greta Gill, the sophisticated yet playful first baseman. In the first episode, Greta helps a teammate craft a special letter to her husband who's away at war after they've had a few drinks. <laughs> I need you to send this immediately. Absolutely. All right, you need to make sure it goes out, all right? Immediately. I will. Don't open it. I, I won't open it. Why would I open it? Why did you even bring I, it? I'm not, is there someone else? I, I don't, this is sealed, so just keep, keep it that way. Henry's a bad boy. No, I won't be. Don't I, be I don't bad. plan on being bad. Don't be bad, don't be bad Henry. Please enjoy your stay. Do not don't be, be bad. bad. Yep. It looks fun. I, oh. I wish I was there that night. I know. Uh, Darcy, good morning. Hi. Thanks Hi. for having me. Thanks for having me. So in that scene, that's actually Abby Jacobson, who you work together on Comedy Central's Broad City. Yes. You guys have a whole history We do. We've together. known each other for like 15 years. So how fun was it to do this together? It was so dreamy. Look, that is Broad City. She's she's about to take that that bat and like beat me in the face <laughs> of it. For real. Check it out. Wow. Um, it was really fun. It was, it was, it's dreamy and lucky and she's one of my best friends and we, we kind of do a lot of pinch me moments. Like there's That's a awesome. lot of moments where we are looking at each other like, how the hell did we get here? <laughs> it's pretty great. It's pretty great. You guys have chemistry too. So let's yes. talk baseball for a moment. I understand. So you grew up playing. I did. So did it feel familiar then to pick up yeah. that? Yes. Yeah, it did. It definitely did. I think I was even like maybe cocky. Okay. I was like, oh, I know. But you I play. also played first base. I played first base. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. But then, you know, we had these amazing coaches, real, real coaches. Justin Siegel, who was one of the first women to coach in MLB, which is amazing. And she brought all of her her uh, her professional women mm -hmm. baseball players. They were incredible. Oh, and awesome. they... They really taught us the things that maybe like the local dad didn't teach me when I was, you know, ten years old or whatever. A lot of a lot of like technical things that I never cool. learned. So did I, it all come back to you? It did. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, I'm older now, so things, <laughs> you know, yeah, I pulled my calf running home one time, mm -hmm. and that's just part of the deal, you know. Yeah. But it was really fun, and everybody got so much better, and it just was it was incredible to get to yeah. play baseball for like a whole summer. It was that's really fun. fun. And get yeah. paid. Yeah. yeah, I guess I did get paid, Al. <laughs> There's that. There's yeah, that. I guess I did. And so the, your name, Darcy. I love the, the spell. Capital D, little apostrophe in there. So yeah. How, how did your parents come up with that? Um, okay. Well, it's funny that you say, how did my parents come up with it? Because I actually gave it to myself oh, in, yeah. in junior better. high. In middle school? Like yeah. Junior high, you was. added the... I, 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 you remember the band Smashing Pumpkins? Oh, sure. The bass player was D apostrophe capital A, and I thought oh, she that's... was so cool, and I just... Changed it. What, what did your mom? <laughs> what did she have to say about? She was not. She was like. She wasn't mad or anything. But she was like, "What are we doing here? Like, <laughs> what are you and doing? Stuck, like, it's in stuck. what phase of your life are you in right yeah. now? Yeah. And so this is happening. To this day, her way of like making fun of me is to sign any letter or email M apostrophe. <laughs> Oh, that's, oh, that's hilarious. Cute. Getting yeah. owned by that's your hilarious. I know. I, I just, love that. That's, part of I that's that. awesome. So la it. last time you were here, yeah. uh, we had not seen the last few episodes of A Good Place. Yeah. A Good Place. Uh, and I myself am still going through withdrawal. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, do you miss that? Because it was such an amazing cast. You got a great cast oh, great in a league of their own. Yeah. But this cast, my God. No, it was God. really special. Like, really special. And I do think that I knew it was special. I mean, I totally did. I'm like getting cast in the show with Ted Danson and Kristen Bell. I know. But I really tried to like live every moment and remember it all. And, and we just had the best time. And it was it was short and sweet. And, and we still see each other all the time. I mean, I was I was at Kristen's house a couple of days ago. Like, we, awesome. yeah, we still all keep in touch. I, I'm always curious because for me, it's like a show I binge and then it, I rewatched it because it's got that rewatchability yeah. factor. Do you do that with that show? Or I no, want to. It's, weird it's you're funny. In it. Yeah, I want to, like during the whole pandemic, I kept being because people really discovered it during mm -hmm. that time. We were all home and, and I kept thinking like, oh, I gotta rewatch it. But 
I, there's something like, uh, yeah, there's some weird Not yet. thing. Yeah. I will watch it again sure. at some point. I love it. I just, it's a, it's a little. It's, it's what do you yeah. watch? Like, what are, what are your shows? What do I watch? Well, I just like. Besides every, the third hour. Yeah, okay, so the third hour. Of course. So after Everyone the third should. hour, I just watch The Bear. Oh, I love, I love Hacks. I love The yeah. Other Two. Mm. Um, you know, I watch like, I, 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 it's funny. This is a weird thing to say, but like a lot of a, a lot of my friends are making great stuff, yeah. so it's really cool to get to watch things, and they are also great. We're like, a place yeah. in life where that happens, right? It's, like, it's weird. You guys have all worked so hard for it, and now we we're all like little scrubs, yes. and we're trying to get somewhere. <laughs> and now, and now it's look at you now. Look at this shoulder. Oh, no, yeah. third hour today. <laughs> That's right. With your apostrophe. That's right. Yes. Yes. Do whatever I want. <laughs> Great to hear from Darcy there, and you can catch A League of Their Own on Prime Video this Friday. Still to come, we are revisiting another beloved film, Spy Kids. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical turn point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. All of you millennials out there might have fond memories of watching Spy Kids growing up. The film featured a family involved in a spy organization, and the dad, well, it was Antonio Banderas. He stopped by today back in 2001 to talk about the film. You have a little girl, Stella, exactly. who's four and a half now. Exactly. Is this something that you wanted to make a movie that she could go to and enjoy? Absolutely, absolutely. I, because I, I do, as you said at the beginning of the interview, very serious movies, and I have to wait probably like 20 years until my baby's going to be ready to see them. Right, right. I wanted to give kind of a gift to her in some way. And, and in a way, it must have been a lot of fun because you really sort of spoof yourself in this movie, don't you think so, oh. in a bit, in, in some small ways, Antonio, because you are this very suave and, and debonair former spy, and mm -hmm. yet you're also this kind of quirky, kooky family man as well. I mean, there are really two sides to this fellow. Right. I, I think it's uh, um, not only interesting, I think it's necessary for actors to have the opportunity sometimes of laughing of ourselves and taking those things that make you probably famous in another movie, serious movies, you know, uh, take them and just uh, take a leap and make them funny and, and, and have the capacity of laughing of yourself, I think is very healthy always. Yeah. And, uh, and with Robert Rodriguez, I would do that, you know, closing eyes anytime. Well, again, it, again it, and again. It, the, the special effects are really quite uh -huh. amazing. Um, was it was it difficult for you because you haven't done a lot of movies with a lot of special effects? Am I right about that? No, no, um, because uh, the movies that I've done that have been action like Desperado or um, and Mask of Zorro, they were movies that they were more western than, than you know kind of technological cybernetic movies that. You, you see in the movie theaters today. But this case was special. I wanted to work in something like that. I wanted to know what is to work with a green screen. You don't have anything around. You just touch on the air. Right. And, and after you see the movie, you say, oh my God. It's, it's a big so challenge, you know, because sometimes you're reacting to things that aren't happening at, at that moment or you're interacting yes. with characters. So was, was it fun or uh, it must have been a, a big challenge? It was more difficult uh, than I thought. It's more difficult than the people may think it is because actually you are doing a real acting job. You're you're acting with 
nothing around except air and a blue screen in the back. But, um, but at the same time, we got beautiful scenographies, which are different and set up the movie in a completely different style. I think basically what we have here is, a, is kind of a Mission Impossible or uh, James Bond right. for kids. In which, and, and, and something happens, you know, uh, it happens to me as a father, you know, when I have to take my kid to a movie, and I always say, oh my God, you know, I'm gonna be just yawning all the time while well, the kids are probably having fun. This movie is not like this. I think this movie is also for parents. You get a lot of wink to the parents, and I think they may have a great time with their kids. Yeah. This is based on and making a lot of emphasis in family values yeah. and a uh, big adventure. Did you have fun with, with your castmates, especially working with the kids? Oh yeah, the kids are amazing. The kids are, the kids are the real actors in the movie, and everybody else who was professional, we were playing theirs like kids. And a happy early birthday to you, Mr. Banderas. That was Pop Star Plus. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow we'll have a great conversation with comedian Joe Coy. Till then, take care. Hi, I'm Vicki Wynn. Thanks for joining me for Consumer Confidential Back to School Safety Guide. We're going to help you kick off a successful year from navigating the social scene to the great debate. Is your child ready for a phone? We'll also have an important lesson on how to stay safe on campus, especially if your student is away from home for the first time. In just a few minutes, we'll talk to Dr. Sue Varma on dealing with the anxiety of returning to school. But first, school safety is on the minds of many. We looked into some of the most effective measures. We aren't going to give away any secrets that could put your kids in danger, but we will show you some of the safety tactics used in schools today to potentially save lives. Nearly 50 million kids in the U.S. are headed back to class. And across the country, districts are approaching security differently. In Indiana, Jay County schools have gun safes on each campus, where trained staff have access with just a thumbprint. Clinton Public Schools in Mississippi added a fourth police officer. And in Las Vegas, El Dorado High School is set for a $26 million security upgrade with cameras, single point entry, and perimeter fencing. I'm here at White Plains High School in New York for an exclusive look at their campus security system. And with me is John LaPlaca. He's a consultant who works with schools across the nation. Let's talk about the security here. What's the first thing a visitor would notice? So as we approach the building, we're going to have a single locked point of entry for visitors. Uh, if they want to gain access to the building, the first step in the process would be they'd buzz in and, on the intercom system, which would be answered by security personnel inside. Hi there, it's John LaPlaca from Altaris. I'm here to visit the main office. So I've announced myself and the security person has now given us access to the building as buzzed us into the vestibule. But that's not it. We're stopped by a second set of doors where security scans our driver's license to cross check against the sex offender registry and local banned persons lists. Okay, John, so now we're inside the school. What other security measures are in place here? So visible throughout the building, you'll see cameras. It also gives law enforcement the ability in an emergency situation to look at the cameras. What about the classrooms themselves? They have electronic locks, which will actually automatically lock in an emergency situation. Some of the best returns on investment for safety and security are things that cost nothing at all. Low-cost signs to help people provide 911 with their location and help responders outside find them. Oh, okay. Okay. We took part in an actual lockdown drill where teachers served as students. Assistant Principal Guy Vitiello, wearing this bright orange shirt, serves as a trespasser on campus. I'm in the classroom with teacher Daniel Furry, who shows us what happens when someone triggers the alarm. I'm going to activate the call. Okay. Students get to the safe zone. Students get to the safe zone. So you instruct your students to go back to the safe zone? Lock down. Lock down. Lock the doors. Stay away from the windows. Across campus, the alert can be seen and heard from these LED boxes. Furry is trained to quickly scan for nearby students before securing the room. So you go outside and make sure that there are no students in the hallway or you grab them to get into the safe zone? Correct. Okay. Come in, come in, get into the safe zone in the corner there. Lockdown. Go in the room. In an actual lockdown, only law enforcement can enter the building. Today, school resource officers from White Plains PD enter through a back door closest to our trespasser. Now, when you close that door, Mr. Furry, does it lock automatically? It lock automatically. Police didn't want to reveal their tactical response, but told us the priority is to go straight to the trespasser and confront the security risk. The White Plains Police, can you tell us why you're in the building? Inside, everyone remains in lockdown. Only police can unlock the doors and let them out. As you stand here in the corner, what kind of goes through your mind? Thinking about the students, you know, and what, how 
how they're feeling and how important it is to reassure them that when they're here, they're safe, that we have systems for them to ensure their safety and their comfort and then reassuring them afterwards. White Plains Police Chief Joe Costelli says his department holds multiple training drills like this every year. These are decisions officers have to make in a split second. How important is training to that muscle memory? The more we do it, the more um, we will react in a crisis situation, in a high stress situation. The time to train is not the time when the crisis is going on. The chief says everyone in the community can make the difference. See something, say something. Look, we want to help anybody who may be in distress. Superintendent Joe Rickus is planning, practice, and communication is the critical first layer of security to keeping any campus safe. At the core of any strong security plan is always going to be the training, training, training. And joining me now is board certified psychiatrist, Dr. Sue Varma to help us ease into the school year and eliminate some of the anxiety that comes with a new year. Welcome Dr. Varma, thanks for being here. Thank you. Help us understand what are some of the conversations that we parents can have with our kids to ease some of their worries. So, you know, school safety is number one on everyone's mind and the child may say, like, how can I, how can I feel safe with all that's happening in the world? And I think it's really important for parents to have age-appropriate conversations. Depending on the kid, you may want to keep it very simple if we're talking about five to seven-year-olds um, and older kids may want a little bit more information. But really having open-ended questions where you leave it to them to say, what are you worried about? Mm -hmm. So we're not projecting our fears and anxieties onto them and then providing some le level of support and reassurance to say it's going to be okay, we'll figure this out. Because really that's what kids want to hear at the end of the day, that it's all going to be okay. What are some action statements that we can use if a kid says, you know, I'm kind of worried about my safety at school. Yes. What is something you can tell them that's concrete? Yes. So I would say, listen, like, let's have a safety plan. You know, I know that the, the idea of kids having cell phones is a big topic and maybe we can talk about that another day. But, you know, if the kid is age appropriate, like somewhere between 9, 10, 11, like I want to give my kids phones like as right nearing that age. So say that you can contact me when you're in school if you don't feel safe if the school allows for it or for example if you're going to like an event and you're at a parade to say if we got um, separated at the parade where's the meeting point what is your address do you know your phone number because a lot of young kids don't know or can you look for like a familiar face in the parade or the event that you're going to so having very concrete tips and to say yeah. I'm going to the PTA meeting I'm going to find out at school what is the plan the yes. safety plan and we're going to get our local legislators involved we'll get the local police department involved so giving them some structure and confidence that you've got things figured out or you're going to figure them out with them. That makes sense. And giving them actual things to do and giving them knowledge, you know, information that you gather. Yes. That's super helpful. What are some of the other back to school anxieties that kids have? Because it's been a summer and maybe they're worried about their friends or just a new teacher, a new school. Yes, all of that, all of the above, like you said. You know, one thing is separation anxiety. Young kids are going to feel like I've spent the whole summer with you and now we're not going to be together. I know the older kids, the teens and tweens may be like, I'm happy to peace out, right? <laughs> right. So the younger kids, um, that separation, if you can create a few moments in the in the morning to mm -hmm. say, listen, we're going to have everything ready. We'll have their lunches packed. Let's just watch some videos for a couple of minutes. Let's laugh. Let's like watch something on YouTube or TikTok, whatever feels family friendly to you. Mm -hmm. um, the other anxieties are fitting in. Body image mm -hmm. issues are a big deal nowadays yeah. as young people are on social media and feeling Especially like they're not. Especially for young girls. Absolutely not living up to standards. So finding them activities that make them feel body confident. Mm -hmm. Sports are a great way of getting, keeping kids active throughout the summer so that they feel a sense of agency over their body, finding them clothes that fit if that's an issue, peer pressure, and like discussing a lot of this and recognizing that it's going to be evolving in real time, but keeping the door open, keeping interested, asking them questions. What are you watching? What are you doing? What are you worried about? Those, that's all such great actionable advice. Dr. Subarma, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, we talked about it there. The great debate coming up, is your child ready for a phone? Plus, we'll look at the other gadgets your kids may need, which include laptops that are right for your family. Later, College Safety 101, the do's and don'ts of college life. Consumer Confidential, coming right back. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good evening.
evening from New Orleans. Nice to go to spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it's known as the great debate. When are kids ready to have a phone? Parents want to be able to stay in touch with their children throughout the day, but owning a phone can open up a different set of headaches. Here's NBC's Kate Snow. The pandemic changed everything, including the way kids learned and spent their free time. According to Common Sense Media, screen use for teens and tweens has grown by 17% since 2019, with kids 8 to 12 clocking five and a half hours a day, and 13 to 18 year olds logging nearly nine hours a day on devices. Now many parents are pumping the brakes. For mom of four, Adriana Stacy, the family policy has always been firm. We don't buy smartphones for our children. She's a psychiatrist who's seen the effects of increased screen time in her practice. I'll get a patient in my office, usually a teenager, who all of a sudden started to really struggle with anxiety and depression. Pretty much every time we can trace that back to when did you get a phone? But her oldest, Annalise, a 10th grader, often feels left out. It's definitely hard sometimes because I have been like left out of decisions because I haven't been on a group chat or something. It's also been a struggle in the classroom. Some of Annalise's teachers ask students to use their smartphones to do classwork. We do feel like we're standing alone on an island. But the island is getting bigger. A movement called Wait Until 8th encourages parents to wait until at least 8th grade to give kids smartphones. The network is 40,000 families strong, and they've seen a 25% increase in participation in the last year alone. Parents have seen the impact of screens on kids over the past couple of years with online school and lots of social media consumption. Let's get our kids outside. Let's get our kids reading. Let's get our kids playing with other kids in real life. And let's let our kids enjoy being kids. Research about the impact of smartphones is mixed. A large study using data from the National Institutes of Health found screen time was moderately associated with worse mental health, increased behavior problems, decreased academic performance, and poorer sleep, but also found using a smartphone or device improved friendships and connection. Dr. Jean Twangy is a professor of psychology at San Diego State and author of the book iGen. Are we basically experimenting on our kids, not knowing what the impact of these smartphones will be long term? All of us are basically living in a big social experiment where smartphones have taken over. In effect, we're experimenting with their brains. Hey, let's give them all smartphone and see what happens. Experts agree if parents are going to allow smartphones, they should be banned from the bedroom overnight, and they recommend setting time limits and parental controls. And for the growing number of parents who decide not to give their kids a smartphone at all, talk to your kids about your concerns and consider a stripped-down phone for calls and texts only. Last year, Annalise Stacy got one of those. At 15 years old, she already sees the benefits of not having a smartphone. It's been a positive experience not growing up with one because I spent more time doing more valuable things and less time on my phone. I have better self-esteem and better social skills and I can definitely like communicate and just talk to people more. Kate Snow, NBC News, New York. In a recent study from the University of Texas, researchers gave people a series of tests without a smartphone near them and then with a smartphone near them. Just having that phone within reach, even though they weren't touching it, 
was enough of a distraction that the people didn't concentrate or do as well on their tests. So food for thought there. All right, so in addition to a phone, there is a lot of other technology that parents may want to consider. Mark Spoonauer, who is a tech expert and global editor-in-chief of Tom's Guide, is here with a look at back-to-school tech for every age. Mark, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, let's start with this. Parents who may not want to give kids a smartphone with all the bells and whistles yet, but they still want the safety and security of knowing they can get in touch with their kids. What are we looking at? So think of this as like a smartphone training wheels. Okay, right? I like so, it. So the first device is the Gyo Bit. Uh -huh. And the idea behind this device is being able to track your kids and know where they are. It's really light. It's 139, so fairly affordable. Okay. You can attach it to their backpack, their clothes. And the idea is that if your kid is coming home from school or, or leaving, you will get automatic notifications on your phone In based on location. Yes. Okay. Okay. And what about this guy right here, this little... Watch so this is kind of like the Dick Tracy watch is, <laughs> is making a comeback. So this is called the TikTok 4. Okay. It, it goes for $199. And unlike the Apple Watch, there's actually, not only can you make phone calls through it, but there's a five megapixel camera built in. So you can have video calls with grandma or whoever you like. Oh, you wow. get to set the contacts. Okay. The other good thing about this watch is that with kids, a lot of people with, with screen time increasing, people are worried about, are my kids staying active? There's an activity tracker built in and oh. there's some gamification features so your kids will want to be active. Moving on to the next item, laptops, yeah. very pricey. What do we need to know about you know the best ones to get for our kids? Sure, so we do a lot of testing um, at Tom's Guide including battery life. And what we love about the new MacBook Air M2 in particular is that it lasts for 14 hours on a charge okay. where we just continuously surf the web. So it does really well in that regard. Mm -hmm. It's also very well built. And we think that students are going to like the new colors, including the blue model that you see here. Uh, the performance is great. And it has a high resolution full HD webcam built in because a lot of us are doing more video calls with parents at home, right. but even interacting with our professors. Okay. So let's yeah. move on quickly to the laptop sure. bag. Some of them actually have locks built in. Yeah. So this is uh, from Mancro, and it's only $26 on Amazon. Mm. And there's a couple of great features. One is that you can order one with a combination lock built in, which is really good mm -hmm. for protecting your laptop. The other thing that you see right here is that there's a, there's a USB cable. And if you want to, you can have it snaking outwards, and there's a USB port right here. So all you have to do is put in your own portable charger. So let's say you're at class and you're right. running low on juice. You can charge up your phone or your laptop using your backpack. Okay, I'm running out of time, but sure. let's talk about these trackers. Yeah. These are so important to keep track of all of your devices, right? Yeah. They're made by Apple and who else? So this is Tile mm -hmm. and Apple. And the best way to look at these trackers and to think about them is that one is for Apple and iPhone mm -hmm. and the other is for Android. Okay, right? very good. So <laughs> and then if you are a student riding a bike, got to get a helmet. Why is this one special? Uh, this is great because it has LEDs built in and it gives you full visibility when you're on the road and there's a remote control built in. So if you're riding your bike, uh -huh. you can actually let people know if you're about to turn left or right and you can control that with remote control on the handlebar or using your Apple Watch. Okay, I'm going to challenge you real quick. <laughs> 10 seconds. What's this? Okay, so the Nest Video Doorbell is one of our favorites because it gives you a very tall aspect ratio. So not only can you see people, but packages that are at your door, which okay. is really great for college students. Mark Spoonauer, our tech expert. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. Still to come, how to talk to kids about peer pressure. But first, College Safety 101. How to avoid becoming a target for criminals. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. 
This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. College is a special time for so many young adults, but that independence also comes with new risks. So how do you avoid being a target for criminals? I went back to school for a refresher course on campus safety. At college campuses across America, it's back to school. Each year, around 20 million U.S. students attend college. For some, it's the first time they're on their own, and safety may not be their first priority. Fortunately, crime on college campuses has been on a steady decline for years. According to the most recent numbers in 2020, there were a reported 28,000 crimes. That's a record low, due in part to remote learning during the pandemic. But as we return to in-person classes, we're here on the campus of Fairleigh Dickinson University in New Jersey for an important lesson on how to stay safe while in school. Joining me is Mike Sapriconi. He has 16 years of experience as an NYPD detective and is now the president of global security firm Squad Security. Mike, we talk about safety all the time. What do we need to know about staying safe when it comes to being on a college campus? Being alert, paying attention, always being vigilant to what's around you, making sure you know your friends, they know where you're going, they have your telephone number, you have theirs. Always to be in touch with somebody. And being prepared is so important. Always being prepared. Let me introduce you to Treasure Thomas. Hi, Treasure, come on in. She's a junior here at Fairly, and she's going to take you through a day in the life of a student here on campus. Great. Uh, nice to meet you, Tracy. Nice Looking to, forward to it. Nice to meet you, too. Her day starts when she drives to class. Great place to park. You want to park where there's a light. So at night, you, have, you know where your car is. You want to park otherwise places where there are other cars parked. And keep your key in your hand. Don't hit it 30 yards out because then someone's going to see that you're opening the doors. When you get close to your car, hit your fob, go in your door. And as soon as you get in the door, before you start your car, lock your door. Almost every school has campus-wide alerts, usually sent via text message. So what should I do if I get that alert? Well, if you're in a classroom, you should certainly be guided by your professor, your instructor. If not, you should definitely contact public safety or if you are your RA if you have some concerns. But you should have a point of contact that you should be able to go to. Another tip, add the number for campus public safety in your phone. They can usually respond faster than 911. A big mistake students make at the library. You see you have your computer out and you probably have your phone out on the desk and sometimes I'm sure you've gotten up to go do something and you've left them there. Of course. And it's a bad idea. Theft is the number one crime on campuses, okay? It's a crime of opportunity. While walking around, Mike says to use the buddy system and if no one is available, call campus public safety. They usually will provide an escort. What if someone's making me uncomfortable and I'm nervous and I'm all by myself? That's important. A lot of people are afraid to say anything, but you should maybe change direction. Walk to where you might see more people and never be afraid to scream. Screaming is good. Screaming scares people. It alerts people. Emergency phone, uh, blue light box. So important on campuses to know where they are and to know how to use them. While touring the dorm, Mike immediately notices some security concerns, like this propped door, which Treasure says students do all the time. Anybody comes in this dorm, that stuff is theirs. I mean, it's just so easy to take. We got to make it a little harder on them. This is great to have the sunlight come in on a beautiful day. But this can't be left like this. You're on the first floor. Good job here by clocking the window. But you don't want everybody to have that easy access to see what's going on or what's in your room. Here's another thing. You have this mirror covering the peephole. It defeats the purpose of you being able to look out. At night, always use the buddy rule. Never accept drinks from strangers and wait until the next day to post on social media so no one can track your whereabouts. We covered a lot of stuff today. Good luck in school in this next semester and spread the word to all your friends. Thank you. Our thanks to Mike and Treasure for all those great tips. And Mike says the buddy system, it works best when you designate one person who will look for you if you don't come back to your dorm or you haven't checked in. All right, up next, dealing with tricky topics from drinking to consent. How to talk to kids about social pressure. You're watching Consumer Confidential on Today All Day. It will mean Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who's this? 
welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. It's a topic parents can't afford to ignore, the social pressure and dangers your kids might face. In 2019, nearly a quarter of 14 and 15 year olds reported having at least one alcoholic drink. And data from the CDC suggests one in 12 high school students experiences physical dating violence. Joining us with important insight is Dr. Danielle Dooley, a general pediatrician and former Georgetown University Health Services worker. Dr. Dooley, thank you for joining Consumer Confidential. Those numbers we just talked about, specifically with the violence, the dating violence, really alarming. What should young people keep in mind when they're going out on a date? So I think it's really important that we equip our teenagers and young adults with the facts and the knowledge. First of all, they should know that about eight out of 10 instances of sexual assault occur between people who know each other. So I think that's really important for them to know. We also want them to know about the different types of violence. There's physical violence, emotional violence, and uh, sexual violence. And then lastly, we really want to start talking with our teens and young adults about what are the components of a healthy relationship. Are these relationships based on trust and honesty and independence? and anger control and respect, or are they relationships based on disrespect, dishonesty, a lack of anger control, and a lack of trust? Dr. Dooley, how should parents navigate difficult conversations on these topics like substance abuse or consent? So first of all, just like you might have a packing list for your child's dorm or what they're gonna need for their academic course loads each year, also on your list should be having this conversation with your child. And I want parents to know that they're not alone. There are a number of resources out there to help guide parents. First and most importantly is committing to having the conversation. Secondly, mm -hmm. finding a quiet space and time in which to do it so you can really have a conversation with your child. Third, you might want to use something that's been in social media or current events as a way to open up the discussion and find out what your teenager knows. Where are they in their thinking and their knowledge about these topics? What are they seeing amongst their friends? And then finally, commit to being non-judgmental and really hearing your teen and hearing what they've been seeing and experiencing are some great ways to open this conversation and navigate these difficult topics. And these aren't just one and done conversations, right? Dr. Dooley, should you revisit this over time? Absolutely. It is so important that these conversations happen repeatedly and that maybe when you have that first conversation, you really set the stage to, I hope this is the first of many conversations. You can mm -hmm. always come and speak to me about things you may have questions about or are concerned about. And even if I don't know the answer, I will try to find the correct information or answer for you. So repeated check-ins and conversations are critical. Thank you. I love that actual language that you're equipping parents with. What are some basic do's and don'ts when you are talking to your kids about these social dangers? So I think some important do's are making sure you make the time and the space for the conversation, asking open-ended questions. So really trying to let your child or young adult tell you what they think or what they know or what they've seen rather than asking questions that are just going to lead to yes or no answers. Mm -hmm. I also think that parents shouldn't be afraid to communicate their own values and expectations around substance abuse and sexual activity. 
And I think some don'ts are don't skip the conversation. It's a really critical conversation to have. Children are seeing a lot about relationships through social media, and I think it's really important that they see and learn and hear about relationships from their own parents as well. So don't skip the conversation and try not to get emotional. You may hear things that are hard to hear, but you really want mm -hmm. to create that open atmosphere for your teenager. Hold the judgment, as you said earlier. Dr. Dooley, what about, what about some red flags that your child might be in trouble? So red flags that your child might be having issues would be if you noticed a sudden withdrawal from activities or sports or organizations or things that they used to enjoy doing. If you noticed a decline in their studies or academics, if you notice they're just not participating in things like they used to, they may have mood changes and seem angry hostile, depressed, or anxious. So all of those would be red flags that it's important to check in with your child. And you could also offer them the option that if they don't feel comfortable or ready to talk to you, is there someone at their school or their college that they would feel comfortable talking to at this point? Dr. Danielle Dooley, thank you so much. We so appreciate your time. And that is our time for now for all of us at NBC News. I'm Vicki Wint. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. I'm Elena Besser. I'm Priyanka Knight. I'm Kevin Curry. And we're whipping up our favorite 30 minute meals for the Today Table. Don't get me wrong, I love spending time in the kitchen to unwind. But there are some days when you just want to get dinner on the table fast. So today we're making three speedy recipes that are just perfect for busy weeknights. I'm making a twist on falafel for all of you buffalo wing lovers out there. I'm making a savory stuffed French toast. I'm making chicken gyros that can be grilled up in a flash. Set your timer and set the table. It's time to get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor Walmart by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I absolutely love buffalo wings. I am so obsessed that I actually have a photo of wings hanging above my bed. Anyway, I also love the food and flavors from Israel. Half of my family lives there and I am always inspired by their cuisine. So today I am creating a mashup of my favorite foods, buffalo wings and falafel. The first thing I'm gonna do is jazz up my favorite hot sauce. So we are going to add in cubed butter to a saucepan over a medium heat, a nice gorgeous cup of hot sauce. You can use whatever favorite hot sauce you have on hand. And then for a little extra pizzazz, we are adding in some garlic powder. And we are going to whisk this together until all of that butter is melted and we have a nice, gorgeously orange sauce. And this is going to happen very quickly. Okay, we will set this aside. And let's get going on our falafel. So to save time in this recipe, because we really wanna make sure that we keep it in the 30 minute mark, we are using canned chickpeas. I know this could be controversial, don't tell my cousins back in Israel. We're gonna start by pulsing these up. See that? It looks really nice and ground up. So we are transferring these back into the bowl from whence they came and we will mix up the rest of our ingredients. Shallot. A shallot is awesome. It's kind of like a combination of an onion and garlic. It has those nice garlic notes in it. So we are going to rock our knife back and forth like so until we get about a tablespoon's worth of shallot. And this is gonna go into our creamy dill sauce, which is basically like a fun yogurt-based version of ranch 
I'm a ranch gal. If you're a blue cheese person, feel free to add a little bit of blue cheese to that mixture. Pop it into a little bowl. With the rest of this, since it's all going into the food processor, so I've got my shallot. I got one clove of garlic. We are now going to add in some chili flake. And then we are also going to add in some parsley. And we are adding in more of my favorite, <laughs> the garlic powder. Hit it with a teeny bit of salt, a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. We're gonna give it a nice fine chop. But this is really giving us a gorgeous green color. It smells so fresh. Okay, so we're just gonna take this mixture and we are going to add it to our chickpeas. In order to make sure all of this falafel goodness binds together, we are going to add in some cornstarch and then we are going to add in a little bit of baking powder to give it some lift. We're going to add some kosher salt as well. And then we are going to, again, fold this mixture together. I'm gonna go get a new pan so we can fry up our falafel. We are using neutral oil here. Pour that right into a heavy bottom skillet. I have a little scooper to help me create these into one ounce portions. You'll just kind of press that mixture into the cookie scoop. And then we're going to push it down. Okay, our oil is properly preheated. We have our falafel ready to rock. Let's fry these up. Make sure that you don't overcrowd the pan because we're going to want to move these around a bit as they cook. And we wouldn't be able to do that if it's too crowded in there. Even before I flip these, you can see how it is starting to get nice and golden brown on the edges. That is what we're looking for, and that is when we know we're getting really close to flipping these falafel. Ah, uh, yeah. Check that out. Now that these are done and draining on a wire rack, I'm gonna sprinkle them with some salt. And then I'm gonna fry up this next batch and when we get back, we will make our creamy dill sauce. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas or my birthday or something. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. My falafel is all fried up, and now I'm going to make a creamy dill sauce. Let's get into it. We have a beautiful cup of full-fat Greek yogurt here, and we're just gonna take that minced shallot that we prepared earlier. 
We want to add in the juice and zest of some lemon. Take any of that extra zest that's hanging out. We will slice this lemon in half and then citrus press, such a great tool. We are going to add in a little bit of kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper. Just going to twist off those beautiful fronds of dill. We're looking for about two tablespoons of dill here. Add some garlic powder right on in. And because Greek yogurt tends to be on the thicker side, what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of room temperature water just to thin it all out and make it a more spreadable consistency for our pita. I love to create a little carrot salad to go with this. We're going to combine some dill pickles for a little extra brininess and some added crunch. We are just going to slice these into thin matchsticks. So we'll start by going lengthwise, really thin down those pickles. And we will take our knife and we'll just rock it back and forth to get these really nice thin strips of pickle. Put them into this big bowl here. And next up, it's carrot time. And we are going to start by just peeling the exterior off of these carrots, like so. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just gonna take our carrot and from top to bottom, we are going to slice these carrots into beautiful ribbons. Look at that, gorgeous. Add that to the bowl and just keep on going. Next up, we are going to add the juice of our lemon just to bring out even more brightness in this salad that we're creating. We also want to make sure that we add in our parsley and we're going to bunch this on up and give it a nice fine chop. It's almost time for dinner. Okay, season it with a little bit more kosher salt, a little freshly ground black pepper and then a nice drizzle of olive oil. So I'm just gonna give this a good toss. Beautiful. All of our components are done. I am ready to assemble the meze platter. Let's start with our carrot salad. So this is looking gorgeous. It is time to adorn our falafel in our sauce. So I'm just gonna take this sauce, take a brush, and brush it right over the tops. And then we're gonna do a little flipperoo. Make sure we get them on both sides. We've been working so hard to do this, so it's time. Let's get after it. This is the best way to get that sauce in every bite. Then we're going to take a little bit of our salad, pop that in the bottom, take a couple of our little falafel nuggets. I'm gonna put three in there. Yeah, full house. A little bit more sauce in there. Oh my goodness. Check it out. Hold for sound effects. Mmm, wow, it is warm and crunchy and fresh from that salad. The buffalo is giving me the perfect amount of heat and that creamy dill, it just mellows it all out. I love this. I know your whole entire family is going to love this. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. 
This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! One of my favorite food memories is enjoying the spicy egg-coated toast my uncle and auntie would make for us on our annual family trips to India. They lived on a large farm, so everything we ate was incredibly fresh. When I went vegan, I wanted to recreate that experience, but without those farm fresh eggs. Well guys, I think I've cracked the code with this recipe for my savory Indian French toast. Let's start things off with the vegan batter. Okay, so first we're gonna dice up one small red onion. We're actually gonna just give these a fine dice and then we're gonna saute it up a little bit. So let's get our nonstick skillet on medium high heat. And while that heats up, we're gonna coat it with some neutral oil. So let's get these red onions in. It's exactly what you wanna hear. You want them to evenly cook throughout. This looks awesome, just wanna show you the coloring on this. They're nice and glossy. This is exactly what we want. So we're gonna turn the heat off and just let them sit. This is our next main component to the batter. So we're using Thai green chilies. I never de seed chilies, nor should you. So we're basically just gonna run our knife through this and give this a rough chop. Now that we've minced up our green chilies, we wanna get started on our batter. So we're using chickpea flour, which we call basin flour at home, which is simply ground dried chickpeas. And to this, we're gonna actually whisk in some water. And you wanna do this gradually because the chickpea flour can easily clump up. So our batter is looking good. The next ingredient that we wanna prepare are some dried spices. So in my mortar and pestle, I'm gonna add one of my favorite spices from my masala dubby, cumin seeds, or what we call jeera. So we're just gonna add the whole cumin seeds here. We're gonna take our pestle and we're gonna grind them down just to a rough grind. Okay, great, so we have a rough grind on our cumin, which is beautiful. So I'm gonna add that to our batter and we're gonna add our green chilies and we're gonna add some salt. And then we wanna add our sauteed onions. We're probably wondering, Priyanka, what is going on with the sauteed onions? Well, don't worry, they're waiting for us. So I'm gonna mix this up and you wanna be gentle when mixing it because you don't wanna break up the chilies and the onions in there. And we have one more ingredient to add to our batter some fresh coriander. This is gonna add a lot of freshness and brightness. We're gonna get it right into the batter. Give that a quick mix. And now it's time to start assembling our French toast. 
So I wanna show you the selection of cheeses I'm working with here because this is super exciting. Not only because one, these are all so delicious, but two, these are all vegan. So we have some smoked Gouda. Then we have a cheddar here, which honestly, this looks like an artisanal cheddar that you could probably get at some like fancy cheese shop, but it's vegan. All right, so to our bread, we're gonna add our cheese. I'm gonna do smoked Gouda in this one. We're gonna do two slices. We're gonna close her up, and then it's battering time. Take your bread, give her a nice dunk. Nice and coated. Okay, to our hot skillet, we're gonna get in some vegan butter. We want the butter to melt and get nice and bubbly, just like it is here. So you wanna see that nice sizzle on the edges and you'll see that it's starting to get golden. You could give it a little bit of a press to make sure that all sides of the bread are cooking evenly. We wanna cook our French toast for about five minutes on each side. It should be a nice golden brown color and that's when you'll know that the batter is cooked. This is looking fantastic. The color is great. You can see the cheese is melting. Feels crisp to touch, so we're gonna remove this bad boy. Let's build our second sandwich. So our sandwiches look amazing, but we still have some leftover batter, but we don't need to waste this because this is not like the traditional egg batter from a French toast. So we're actually gonna make my version of chewy, which are chickpea flour based pancakes. So we already have our skillet here, and to this we're gonna add some neutral oil. We want a good amount of oil here because this is gonna be like a little bit like a shallow fry of the batter. Give these a flip. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for, that golden brown. We have our French toast, we have our chewy pancakes, so I'm ready to serve everything up. So what I like to do is I like to take the French toast and cut it in half so we can reveal the beautiful inside. So first, we're gonna drizzle it with the traditional maple syrup. Now, this might sound weird, but the sweetness of the maple syrup goes really well with the spice. Kind of think of it like eating bacon with maple syrup, but this is not bacon. We're gonna add a little bit of chaat masala. So chaat masala is probably one of the most widely used spice mixes in India, and it has a bunch of different spices, like mango powder, which is a little bit tangy, black salt, which kind of has that umami salty flavor, cumin, coriander, so many things. And we're gonna add a little cheek of lemon because this is gonna add that freshness and brightness that's gonna go really well with every bite you take. There we have it. We're gonna take our French toast, we're gonna do a little dunk. Oh my God. Mmm. It's like I never left India. The chilies, the coriander, they're so fresh and so vibrant, and I love the textures on this, and we did this all in just 30 minutes. How cool is that? The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. And who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Euros are an iconic Greek staple. Now, traditionally, the meat is stacked on a vertical spit so you can get a, a mix of crispy and juicy meat pieces. Thankfully, for my version, you don't need a giant spit in your kitchen. <laughs> so my marinade is really simple. We're just gonna use a little bit of lemon. I'm gonna slice this. I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon juice. Squeeze it into a bowl. Also gonna be adding in some red wine vinegar. And then some personality for this, we're gonna keep it really simple and adding in some dried oregano. Pinch of salt and some fresh cracked pepper. Whisk this up. There you go. Now I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to our chicken breast. All right, so I'm gonna butterfly this chicken first just to get it a little bit thinner. And when we thin it out, you can have and much more even cooking throughout the chicken. Open it up and it makes a beautiful little heart just like this. So now, we're gonna flatten this out a little bit more. I'm gonna take some plastic wrap. I'm gonna add one of the pieces to it. I'm gonna use this mallet, it's a little bit easier. We're just gonna flatten it out. If you have a rolling pin as well for baking, use that. Again, we're just trying to flatten this out. This is not a contest that you're at the local fair trying to win a teddy bear for somebody. I'm gonna add a piece of chicken right here to our marinade. So I'm gonna let this rest at room temperature, but you can also do this as a make-ahead recipe and do it overnight, but not too long because the chicken will come out mushy. Now you can't have a gyro without a creamy yogurt sauce, and here is my speedy one. So we're gonna line a bowl with some heavy-duty paper towels and grate this cucumber right into the bowl. And the reason we're doing this is cucumber is it's a whole lot of water. There we go, it looks just like this. Now, I'm gonna make this sweat just a bit by adding in a pinch of salt. Mm. Now we're gonna set this aside, let this rest, and then prepare the rest of our sauce. Starting off here with some thick Greek yogurt, super high in protein. We're gonna make this really bright today. <laughs> let this whole lemon. And then I am a garlic lover. I know I like a little bit of breast stink in my recipes, so I'm gonna use at least one, but if you use two, I would not be mad about that at all. Garlic adds a whole lot of flavor. Hit it with a splash of vinegar. Some red wine vinegar. I like dill, so I'm kinda heavy-handed with it. There we go. Pinch of sea salt. Some black pepper. And then we're gonna finish it off with some heart healthy olive oil. Again, this is my version. I don't want all the Greek grandmothers outside my door telling me, this is not right, Kev. No, this is just hero ish, tzatziki ish, okay? Mix this together. Don't worry, I have not forgot about our cucumber. We're gonna mix this first. Look at that. Beautiful, creamy sauce. Head back to check on our cucumber, exactly what we want here. Squeeze it. You don't have to go overboard here either. I mean, if you're squeezing so hard that it's tearing through the paper towel, it could either be the paper towel or it could just be you, Hercules. And now just fold everything together. Look how beautiful this is. Mmm, our tzatziki is looking really good. It's time to get our veggies. Now our grill pan is nice and hot. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of avocado oil to spray, boom. I'm gonna take our chicken, shake off some of the excess marinade. In goes the chicken. We love that sound. Pinch of salt, just a little pinch, don't need much. So we're gonna cook this chicken for about four minutes on each side. Ready for the flip, here we go. One, two, three, flipping it over, boom. Look at that. Beauty! Look at them grill marks, y'all. <laughs> and as it's finishing up, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit more lemon on there. Just some citrus love. Ooh, look at that. Is it ready? 
and it lifts all the way up very easily. Boom. And if you need to, you can spray your grill pan just a little bit more, shake off the excess marinade, and in goes your other piece of chicken. Now, keep this grill hot. I'm gonna do a light spray, some oil. Now, we still have the flavor from the chicken and the marinade there. I'm gonna put our pitas right on in there. Can gently press down, just to make sure it's not burning. We just wanna cook it long enough where there's a little bit of color on there. All right, this is really nice. I'm gonna turn off our pan. So we let our chicken rest for about five minutes, so now all those juices won't run out as we slice it up. And now it's time to build our sandwich. We got our fresh veggies here. We're making gyros, we're making gyros. Okay, so we're gonna open up our pita here. Gonna add in some of our creamy tzatziki. And then add in some lettuce. Stuff it all the way up in there. Get some tomato. A Little bit of onion action here. And then don't forget the feta. It's like a double cream factor with the tzatziki. And then take our chicken, mm-hmm, and just load this bad boy up. Oh, wow. All right, this looks amazing. Can't wait to take a bite. Mm-hmm. I mean, if that was a mic, I'm dropping it right there. So darn easy, so darn delicious. Mm. Welcome to Shop Today. From my current obsessions in Itlis to a roundup of favorites for an instant refresh, we bring you the hottest products and the best tips for how to use them. Plus, I sit down with the biggest names in the business and shop the stars. It's just perfect. And share the trending products that are worth the hype and buzzworthy. We've got it all, including the latest technology so you can shop right with us with just a click. All this and more only on Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. Hello and welcome to Shop Today. I'm so glad you're joining us because today we're taking things back to the basics as we prepare to welcome in a new season with a fresh start. This episode is all about the essentials you need to simplify in style. From your home to beauty routine, wardrobe to footwear, I've curated the best of the best to kick off fall on the right foot. My it list includes everything I'm loving this season and the best part, all of my picks can be styled together. It's really so important to go back to the basics when it comes to fashion. These items are classics. They can be worn again and again. And because, you know, I always bring a deal, we have some exclusive offers just for our Shop Today family. So get ready to shop. It is so easy. Just scan that QR code at the corner of your screen with your smartphone or tablet for instant access. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. Let's start with the ultimate workhorse, a perfect pair of jeans. Meet the 90s cheeky jean from Everlane. Pair these jeans with a tee for that classic look or dress them up with a blazer and heels. The brand says these jeans are made from Japanese denim, has an easy straight leg and an extra high rise. I find them so comfortable and flattering. Come in six different colors ranging from a bleach blue, which I love, to a deep Atlantic. A good jean never goes out of style, so investing in one as timeless as this makes sense. The jeans retail for $108. Speaking of a classic tee, let's talk about the Everlane's Organic Cotton Box Cut Tee. It's the ultimate staple. This tee features a crew neckline, which is very versatile, short sleeves, and a slightly cropped length. It has a relaxed fit, and the brand says it's made of 100% organic cotton. It's so soft, it's great for layering under a jacket, sweater, or blazer. The tee comes in versions with a pocket or without, and various colors in solid and stripes. Sizes range from extra, extra small to triple XL. The tees from Everlane retail for $30. You know I love layers because in the fall especially, it starts out cool and then heats up. This is perfect for those chilly mornings. The cardigan from Qualfort is a great piece to wear with your new jeans and tee. I love this oversized look of the cardigan. 
It features a relaxed button-down fit and chunky knit. The brand says it's made from 100% cotton and it's really multifunctional because this cardigan is lightweight enough to wear on a warmer day or layer it over a long sleeve for extra warmth. It comes in multiple colors like green, magenta, and black. And I love that the product has inclusive sizing. This comes in sizes small to triple XL. The cardigan starts at less than $30. Next up, something we can't get enough of, Levi's is synonymous as we know with jeans. And they didn't miss the mark on this one. This is their women's ex-boyfriend trucker jacket. How cute is this? This jacket has an oversized fit for an extra relaxed silhouette. The brand says it's an updated take on their original jean jacket. And really, it is the ideal layering piece. Comes in four different washes, and the sizes range from extra small to extra large or size down for a tighter fit, but I actually like the relaxed look. The back waist tabs also make it adjustable. Plus, the pockets are great for on the go and really works for any season. The Levi's jean jacket retails for $98. Scan the QR code below to check them out. Next up, we have our first exclusive deal. This is the Softy from Ya Living. A scarf is such a great addition to any look. Add it as a touch of color or layer on top of sweaters for some additional warmth. This one comes in 11 different colors from gray to blush, navy, and more. There's a color for any outfit. Plus, since it's oversized, this scarf doubles as a great pashmina to wear over your shoulders. You could use it as a blanket during travel or on a chilly night and you really can't beat the price. Check this out. The retail is 125. The deal for any of the colors is 34. That's more than 70% off. Moving on to footwear. I just love the Brooklyn clog from Steve Madden. The clog is back. They have a wood sole and a black heel. It's a slip on style that makes it easy to throw on and head out the door while looking effortlessly cool. They feature an on-trend studded trim, perfect for the fall. It comes in black and off-white in leather and taupe and dark brown in suede. These are great for work or even a night out. You cannot go wrong. And the Brooklyn Clog retails for $65.40. That is a great deal. Last up, talk about a trend coming back for all ages. These backpacks from Jansport are everything right now. A new backpack screams fall refresh, and with these timeless styles, you can't go wrong. Jansport has updated its classic backpack with new prints, styles, and materials, including the ones we have here. But these styles still have that classic, dependable silhouette that we know and love. Pick your features, such as a water bottle pocket, laptop sleeve, internal organization, or even a larger pack. No matter what the double straps make it easy to carry everything in one place and make commuting, traveling, or school trips a breeze. If you're on the go a lot, this is a must have. The Jansport backpacks come in prints like the adorable strawberries. Scan the QR code to check out all the different styles and find the right one for everyone in your life. The backpacks from Jansport, super affordable, starting at $25. Well, that wraps up my it list for Back to the Basics. Let's run through the products one more time. We have the 90s cheeky jean and cotton box cut tee from Everlane, the cardigan from Qualfort, the women's trucker jacket from Levi's, the softy from Ya Living, the Brooklyn clog from Steve Madden, and the Jansport backpacks. To shop these products, just scan the QR code below for instant access to all the items you see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. And just so you know, today may make a commission for purchases made through the QR codes or links on today.com. Coming up from sleep to beauty, I'm giving all of your routines an instant refresh for the fall with products, including a comforter that feels like a cloud and a four-in-one makeup brush, plus more exclusive deals only for our Shop Today viewers. And later, I sit down with megastar actor and producer, the incredible Issa Rae. She'll have you laughing and inspired. All of that and more coming up only on Shop Today. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it.
For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Shop Today, where we're going back to the basics. Whether it comes to sleep, beauty, or even your workout routine, adding one or two new items to your go-to basics can really help brighten up your day and jumpstart a new routine. Let's get started with one of the most important routines of all, sleep. Meet Nod Pod, a weighted blanket for your eyes. The design is strap-free, so you literally just lay it across your eyes. Not only does it black out light, but the brand says the design equally distributes the power of deep touch pressure across key pressure points as you fall asleep. The Nod Pod comes in nine colors and goes for $34. From a weighted blanket for your eyes to a comforter for your whole body, look at this. This is the Buffy Cloud Comforter. The Buffy Cloud Comforter is medium weight and designed for year-round use. And it's the brand's mission to make it earth-friendly too. They say the comforter is made from sustainably produced fibers and recycled bottles that make up the inside fluff. The Buffy Cloud Comforter comes in twin to California King and starts at $129. Great investment. Next up, I've rounded up a multitasker that lives up to its name, the Alley Multitasker 4-in-1 Makeup Brush. This one brush not only helps with decreasing clutter, but has four main brushes you need in one tool. So on this end, look at this. So you would use this as a sponge. You can dampen it and use it underneath your eye, use it for concealer. On the other side is a brush, and then get this, it opens this, is for your eyeliner. If you want to do it on the bottom, you can even use it on your brows, but there is also eyeshadow. Is this amazing? All in one and fits right into your bag. The Alley Oop Multitasker 4-in-1 Makeup Brush is $28. That's really an incredible deal. Do your necklaces always get tangled? Well, the layering necklace trend is not going anywhere. This little clasp can pack a big punch when it comes to keeping your necklaces neat and tangle free. The Festival Us Necklace Layering Clasp comes in silver plated or gold plated and can hold either two or three necklaces at a time. This keeps them separated so they won't tangle. Isn't that genius? Simply attach your favorite necklaces to the clasps in the back. It will keep them organized and secure all for under $7. Moving on to something we all need to replace, undergarments. Here's a sign to do yourself a favor and swap out those old stretch out pieces because this is one of our exclusive deals and it's a good one. Upgrade your undergarments with these Naked Rebellion bralettes. They come in eight shades of nude and also in black. This is a great way to refresh. If a razorback is more your speed, this is the bra for an active lifestyle and you never have to worry about strap slipping. We even have a deal for the company's best-selling tank bra. A perfect fit is so important for bras. Make sure you read the size chart to find yours. The retail price for the bras are $68, but today, our viewer deal is $34, that's 50% off. Naked Rebellion is offering matching underwear as well. And whether you prefer thongs or briefs, they have something for everyone. And the thongs are made of a mesh fabric, while the briefs have a full coverage nylon front and the mesh fabric backside. The retail price for the underwear range between 20 and 22, but today our viewer deal is just $10. That's more than 50% off. And last up, whether you are wearing workout clothes to lounge around in or hit the gym, a new matching outfit can bring relaxation or often motivation to your day. 
This set is from a brand called Park. Their high rise ribbed legging and the Royal Rib Sports Bra are matching sets and sets are in and so is this rib texture. The leggings are made with four way stretch. It has a high waisted fit. The fabric is 80% nylon with 20% spandex. So there's tons of stretch. They come in five pretty colors. Be sure to scan the QR code or head to our website to check them all out. The leggings retail for $98, but our deal today is $28. That's more than 70% off. And the sports bra retails for $74, but our deal price is $18. That's more than 75% off. And that rounds up my favorite, not so basic basics. Let's go through the products one more time. We have the Nod Pod Weighted Eye Mask, the Buffy Cloud Comforter, the Alley Oop 4-in-1 Makeup Brush, the Festival Us Necklace Layering Clasp, the Naked Rebellion Undergarments, and the Park Legging and Sports Bra. To shop these items, simply scan the QR code. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. Coming up next, actor and best-selling author Issa Rae. I'm just confident in what my insecurities are. I'm like, this is part of me. These are my flaws. And that's just part of who I am. And later, have you heard about gaucho cowboy boots or bravery badges? You will want them when you see them. I have the buzziest items that are anything but basic. All that and more only on Chop Today. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now, tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Mr. Secretary, when is this going to get better? You came into this job saying you were to fight crime. Have you been successful? Found a way to put that. Can you update us on the status of negotiations? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Shop Today. This episode is all about refreshing and resetting. And there's no one more impressive to get us motivated and inspired than megastar, actor, writer, director, and producer Issa Rae. Seriously, what can't she do? We sat down for an honest and hilarious conversation. Plus, she shares her new role, entrepreneur, that is sure to have fans buzzing. Take a look. First of all, it's so nice to meet you. It's and so thank you be for being here and for bringing your positive energy into the room. Everyone's so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Third Emmy nomination. When I say that, what comes to your mind? Just grateful, grateful as hell, because it was unexpected and it's our last season. So to have that, that nod is just super special. But now as an executive producer, and we're hoping there are cameos from you in Rap Blank. Rap Blank. Rap Blank. Rap Beep. Um. <laughs> 
What was your mission with Rap Blank? My mission was first and foremost to create a show that I wanted to watch. And I love rap and I love female rappers in particular. I love the energy and the way their songs make you feel. And I want to have a show that embodied that and a show that represented this moment in time. What would you tell your younger self? I would tell her that it gets better to stop comparing your journey to others, because that was big for me. So I'd be like, you know, take your time, make sure the work is good, keep your head down, and don't worry. Like stay in your lane. Stay in your lane and make your own lane. What was your biggest insecurity and what is your biggest insecurity? Ooh, what was my biggest insecurity then? I, I, I can't describe it, but it was, it was just a sense of self. Like I just wasn't comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. And now my biggest insecurity, it all has to do with career stuff. Like, you know, how much time I have, even in releasing new projects, like with Rap Blank, there was a fear behind that, but it diminishes over time. I think as I get older, what I realize is I'm just confident in what my insecurities are. I'm like, this is part of me, these are my flaws, and that's just part of who I am, so. I mean, you've basically done everything imaginable. Is there is there something we don't know about you or a question you kind of wish people would ask you about like a hidden talent? I wish I had hidden talents. <laughs> I definitely want to explore like, you know, my Senegalese, my French side more. And that's something that like, you know, I want to explore in terms of projects, in terms of work. My accent is still struggling and Can I have I a long it? way to, no, no. <laughs> I have a long way to go. That's my insecurity, is my French accent. But like, I, that's a goal for me to cross over. Before we bring Hannah in, you're actually related. I work with my family and I love that you started a line with your sister-in-law. I watched her build this product from the ground up and I tried every iteration of the product and it's only gotten better. And this is, this is my line. Is there a wrap around Sienna Naturals yet or a little jingle? I'll give you one jingle right now. Sienna Naturals. I love it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hannah, thank you for joining us. And you heard the jingle. What did you think about it? <laughs> I mean, I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. She I love it. it. So, so yeah. we're just gonna trade we're going to trademark it. going in the studio. Thank you. Hannah, tell us about Sienna Naturals and the purpose as to why you created this. And in many ways, I feel like I made Sienna Naturals for nine-year-old me. My mom's instinct was to go to the natural food store to buy not only our food, but also our personal care and our hair care. And often those products made my hair feel worse or, or actually become damaged from the products themselves. As a child, I think I internalized it as there's something wrong with me and my hair. And as I grew up and became an adult, I realized this is an industry problem. Everyone deserves clean products that perform for them. So this relationship, you are married to Issa's brother, which is how you were introduced to the line. Like I said, I watched her make these products in their kitchen, and I've been the guinea pig so many times for her products and seen them develop over time. And you use them for your entire family, for our nieces and nephews, like they are ingrained in our family. Okay, let me get into this little perfect wash day ritual quiz. Wash day ritual quiz. What I love about this is that you start with a quiz. Like not every product is for every person. Yeah, so Sienna Naturals, really the value of the products is to restore the health of your hair and scalp through what we call a wash day ritual. And we are able to customize those wash day rituals depending on your needs, your hair type, and how you most often wear your hair. You put together a kit, both full size and travel size. Let's start with the shampoo. Happy Shampoo is really designed, and most of our products have um, ingredients that are, go toward the benefit of the scalp and benefit of the hair. So there's actually an active ingredient that helps to retain moisture and hydrate the scalp. The next step in the wash day ritual is gonna be the Plant Power Hair Mask. And this is our hardest working mask product. Its purpose is not only to moisturize the hair, but also to help strengthen the hair. I constantly have different hairstyles. And so for me, this is this is part of my routine because my hair is constantly stressed. Okay, so then the, tell me the next step. So step three is our Do Magic Leave-In Conditioner. One thing about this leave-in conditioner is it's actually very lightweight. And so it tends to be a lot slipperier and a lot more liquidy than a typical leave-in conditioner would be. I even feel like you could see it on my hand. And then step four. 
Step four, we have two oils in our rituals. One is the lock and seal, which is really to help seal in moisture and protect the hair. And then in, in other rituals, we also have our daily elixir, which is another fan favorite. And then organically, you said, I need... I need styling products and I need a curl cream. You know, after, it's great to have hair health, but you can't just be walking around willy-nilly. So she was open to that and developed this curl cream. I have tons of videos that I've sent her trying each iteration. It was really a co-creation. And man, Issa feedback videos are something. I wish I could share them with the Can world. Can you but share I'm, them? Are no, they I've been sworn to secrecy. They're in the vault. But the challenge here was, you know, at Sienna Naturals, we don't formulate with any petroleum-based ingredients. We don't formulate with silicones. We actually ended up finding this plant-based cellulose technology that works to revive curl memory and help bring back your curl pattern. Um, so thanks, Issa, for pushing us. Like, I didn't so, even yeah. know all that. So it was just, it's such a beautiful result of our partnership. And this is our latest product, our first styling product. And yeah, and and more to come. More to come. Well, you're both so lovely and you could tell energetically how beautiful your relationship is as family members, but also as colleagues. And it's amazing to be able to put those two things together. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks to Isa, who had me laughing the entire time, and I'm sure you too. And that was such a great conversation. To shop her items and see more of her line, scan the QR code below or head to today.com slash shop all day. Well, next, my favorite buzzworthy products, including fun new bravery badges that are perfect for back to school, coming up only on Shop Today. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The day's biggest political stories, with trusted insight, now, and expert analysis, now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Well, we are going back to the basics as we get ready for fall. And now it's time for the buzziest items in everything from fashion to footwear. Let's jump right in with one of our exclusive deals, the Love Token Rebecca Sweater. As we look ahead, this will easily become your go-to fall essential. The fit is slightly off the shoulder, which I love, with an exaggerated sleeve detail. And this one's right on trend. It's so stylish, you might even get excited for those cooler temperatures so you could show it off. The Love Token Rebecca Sweater comes in five colors, including black, ivory, and oatmeal, and runs from extra small to extra large. Very stylish, and I love the sleeve. The retail price is $149. The deal, get this, $58, that's 61% off. Also makes a great gift. Next up, I'm loving this, even with a sundress, cowboy boots. They've stepped into the social media spotlight, so meet the affordable Coconuts Gaucho Cowboy Boot. These mid-calf boots are instant classics and come in white and brown. If you are looking for an easy way to try the trend, step into a pair of these and walk out in style. The Coconuts Gaucho Cowboy Boots go for just under $70. If you have longer hair like me, there are times when you need to clip it away from your face, and these Magic Sky Hair Claw Clips make it easy. They are made of acrylic, resin, and alloy, and according to the brand, the clamps 
are non-slip, so your hair will hold firmly. They won't slip out. Don't you hate it when you put in the clip and then it doesn't hold your hair? Well, this will solve that problem. You get four different colors for $8.99, so share with your friends or keep them around the house. So when you need them, they are everywhere. Just loving these. And lastly, we all need bandages for those boo-boos from time to time. And I just love having these in the house when something goes wrong because you can make it playful. They are called Welly Bravery Badges. Who wouldn't want to stick these on? From ice cream to unicorns to dinosaurs and peculiar pets, these bravery badges are anything but ordinary. You can even repurpose the stackable tins. And according to the brand, the bandages are free from common allergens, including latex and silicone. The boxes start at just $7.99. Well, that wraps up my buzzworthy products. Let's go through them one more time. We have the Love Token Rebecca Sweater, the Coconuts Gaucho Cowboy Boots, the Magic Sky Hair Claw Clips, and the Welly Bravery Badges. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. I hope you had fun going back to the basics in style. And don't forget, you can always shop the items from today's show by simply scanning the QR code below or text SHOP to 34318 or visit our site the old-fashioned way at today.com slash shop all day. A big thank you to superstar actor, producer, and best-selling author Issa Rae for joining us to talk about her Sienna Naturals line and I hope that each of these not-so-basic basics brighten up your season as we head into fall. We'll see you back here next time with more of my favorites and deals only on Shop Today. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for doing this. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for hosting us I'm, in your spot. I'm thrilled that you're all out here in our little store. What is it like to be sitting in a brick and mortar store surrounded by sort of the universe you've created? So much of what you've done is online, obviously, but yeah. to sort of see it all in front of you and have people come in and look and touch and feel. You know, I, I always find it surreal a little bit when I come into a store. And I think even more so now in a post-COVID landscape because... Our stores were closed for so long, and it's so nice to actually, I don't know, come back into a physical space and see customers. And it's such a place of discovery for people, and everybody's always smiling when they're in the store. So I, I love coming into the store. That's a good sign. Is there <laughs> one place when they come in later today, they'll go? Is it to the candles, the famous candles? Is there something <laughs> they're really coming in here looking for? I think we have kind of a variety of people who come into the store. You've got like your diehard goop shoppers um, who come always for G label every month or they come to see, you know, our curation. We're kind of known for the curation and assortment. And then there are people who heard about it in the press who are just curious and are coming in either to see sexual wellness or candles. Um, and then there's the clean beauty, of course, which we're really proud of that whole section and what we'll be able to I don't know, contribute to the clean beauty movement. And so there's always something for everybody here in the store. I didn't realize how long this has been brewing in your head. Mm -hmm. The newsletter's 2008, the company comes a few years later, but sort of at the height of your Hollywood powers 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you were already thinking about something else. Where did that start for you? Well, I think I've always, um, I've always been a person that's been incredibly curious and always wanted to learn. And, and that to me is also like learning where the best bagel shop in Sag Harbor is and kind of gathering good information and sharing good information. It's always been my real passion. And I've always been like a pretty discerning customer. So I remember when the internet was kind of first getting going, I couldn't really find anything in the lifestyle space that spoke to me as a customer. And, you know, I didn't trust the travel curations, for example. And so I thought, gosh, it would be so fun to have a site on the internet that kind of had uh, a collection or an aggregation or a curation of really the things that make me excited. So it took me a long time of talking to people, meeting with people, asking questions. Even before I just decided to send that very first simple newsletter, it was a good few years in the making. And as you thought about it then, was that sort of, this is my next chapter 
after acting or is this a parallel chapter with acting? I describe it as like I'm in my life and I'm doing my thing, but there's some part of me that's preparing for something else <laughs> in my future. And I don't think I was consciously thinking about a next chapter, but I think I was definitely thinking about, um, you know, the years that I had spent doing three, four, five movies a year, traveling all the time, missing my home, missing my friends and family, um, and also wondering, you know, do I have permission to ask, even ask the question, like, do I, would I want to do something else? Like, would I have the liberty to pursue a different passion? And how, what would that look like? And, and so it was a slow process for me. It definitely was like a leap that I was taking. When you started writing the newsletter, mm -hmm. at what point along that journey did you say, oh, this can be something more? Maybe there's a company in there yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I think, you know, well, I remember a specific moment when um, I had done a piece on the French pharmacies. So the pharmacies in France are fantastic and they have all these amazing products. I kind of had done an edit of the best of the French pharmacy and somebody stopped me on the street and said, you know, I love that piece so much. I just wish I could have clicked to buy at the end because I was on, you know, Amazon.fr trying to find this and that and it was such a nightmare. And I, it was the first time that it occurred to me that you could have e-commerce as a service as opposed to just being so transactional, like buy this, buy this, like that a curation was actually valuable and information and someone like going out and doing all the legwork for you could actually be a value proposition. And so that's when I started to think about how e-commerce might might play into this. Did you have people in your life saying, this is nice, Gwyneth, that you're <laughs> doing pretty well with the acting thing. Let's, let's keep our focus here. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, not in my immediate life because I think my family and my friends, I think they're used to my, I think what was always a really entrepreneurial spirit, right? I mean, I think when you're an artist, it's very entrepreneurial. You have to believe in yourself so much when nobody else believes in you and you have to visualize that you're gonna get somewhere and it's, it's, so there are a lot of parallels, I think. Um, but definitely, you know, people not closest to me were like, you know, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> Why is she doing this? And um, which, you know, it's like the story of my life. How did you bump up against those skeptics and, yeah. and deal with some of that criticism? And like being my own worst skeptic in that capacity, right? Not knowing yeah. if I had the ability to run a company and, um, and really having to learn on the fly how to run a company and making so many mistakes, you know, because I hadn't grown up in the world of e-commerce or growth marketing or anything, you know, I had just, I just had passion and an instinct and like, I thought, you know, good taste. And, um, and so I, I set out to do it and I didn't, I didn't set out to run it. When I first started to think about how to monetize it, I thought somebody else, you know, has to do this. So I hired a CEO a great guy named Seb, who was my first CEO in London. And unfortunately, when I was moving to America, he couldn't move, he was gonna come. And it, it, over the next couple of years, I realized like that certainly at the size we were, that I was the right person to run the company. And despite the myriad mistakes that I've made, I still think that that was the right decision up to a point. I mean, you know, I think at a certain point, it's gonna be, too much for me and I'll hand the, hand the keys to somebody else. But you've got the company this far. Mm -hmm. You've done pretty well with it. <laughs> you don't think you could take it to the next level? Well, it's, it's hard for me to gauge because I, I, I know what I have not known from zero to where we are now and I don't know what I don't know from now mm. into like the next phase. And so, I mean, I ask questions all the time. I call other founders all the time. What should I anticipate? Like what's around the corner? What, how do you really scale after this you know, point? And I think that I could probably do it to a certain point, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure if I could run it. You know, like if, you know, if we were, I had an even more complex international omni-channel business. Like, I just don't know that I would be the right person at that point. You're in every meeting. You're making all the decisions. 
Was that a hard adjustment for you where, oh my gosh, this is all coming back to me at the end? Yeah, for sure. And a scary one. Um, I think when you work at a company like Goop, you, you have to assemble a great team around you and, and really, you know, I think the team that we have is amazing and we make decisions collectively, but the buck always stops with me. And I would say it is difficult to be the creative force, the driving force creatively, and to have all these ideas all the time, but also to be the person who's responsible for the P&L. Sometimes those are competing intentions. Yeah. And so it's been, it's been very interesting for me to learn how to adjudicate those things and understand like when it's okay to take a risk and when it's not. And I mean, you never know 100%. I know that as fun and invigorating as it is, there are some really tough days. And there are moments where you're like, actually, I'm not sure if this is gonna work. I don't know if we're yes. gonna get there. Yeah. Did you have several of those moments before you got to this point? I have them all the time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course. And especially like having gotten through a pandemic and now there's a looming recession and it's always something and you think like, you know, is this gonna be okay? Do, do I have the chops to get us through this? Like, what am I not thinking about? What else, you know, is, like what are the potential landmines? Um, and it's funny, I saw something once that said, you know, it's like the creative process and it was like someone ideating or having an idea and it was like, this is brilliant. I am brilliant. I think this is okay. Like, <laughs> I don't think this is okay. This is <laughs> I am <laughs> And then it starts again, you know, it's like, and that's very true and I think that's just, part of the the seasons of you know being a founder and being so close to what you're doing and having to get excited by your own ideas which is so weird and then sometimes you think like this is terrible like why am i doing this like, you know <laughs> but it <out>. passes <laughs> yes i've had many of those days but then the next day is a good day and you're you're right back at it right yeah or the next day you know someone you know says like you know i had a conversation with my daughter about her sexual wellness that I never thought possible and you facilitated that and I'm so grateful because I grew up with all this weird shame around it and now you know and she cited goop like things like that happen and it like makes me cry or someone says you know I found the best restaurant I ever went to and you know on your thing and I met some you know it's like those that that web of meaning that happens when I think you're creating a business from a place of really wanting to help people find great things and you know, bring them shortcuts and, and bring them amazing quality products, like that happens. So those things always fill me back up and make me think like, okay, I, you know, I'm gonna keep going. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's talk about some of those amazing products. Okay. Some of the ones that get the most attention. Yes. The candle on top there. Mm hmm Tell me the story behind the candle, the one that everyone talks about. Yes, I will. We really believe at Goop that um, there are a bunch of taboos that exist that keep women particularly kind of ensconced in shame and out of their power. 
And so we like to find those paradigms and expose them. The This smells like my vagina. Can I say that on yeah, morning TV? Okay, absolutely. good. So see, we've made yeah, progress. We we've made it's progress. This right is here. great. So that so they're really they're really provocations more than candles. They're meant to sort of take people by surprise and then ask like what is this? What does this mean? And this is like triggering. And why is it triggering? And I think there's a lot of, it's certainly when I grew up, there was a lot of shame around our sexuality um, or ambition. And so the This Smells Like My Vagina candle is really like that provocation to say like, it's amazing to be a woman in every way. It's amazing to have that kind of power and you deserve to have that agency. And so it's just kind of a funny, strong way of you know, being a provocateur. And you guys have a big focus on pleasure, which I feel like yeah. even lately, partly because of you guys, people talk about that more yeah, openly. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think, you know, it's a conversation that we started around that very thing, right? Like, what is it like to be a woman who is not afraid of orienting around pleasure? That's It's not selfish. It's beautiful. It's important. You know, whether it doesn't have to be sexual pleasure, but just this idea that, you know, we all deserve pleasure and it's a beautiful part of life, right? And so the sexual piece of that, you know, sexual wellness is a really new vertical, both at Goop and I think in, in culturally. So I think we're really proud of what we've been able to do culturally and shake that taboo off a bit. So what do you see, whether it's with you at the helm or not, what do you see next for Goop? Well, I think we still, you know, we have a lot of, work to do. I think just, again, like having been a startup and made a lot of mistakes, like we're, we're in a really interesting foundational year of like cleaning up a bunch of processes. And I think we, we really are excited to keep kind of introducing the brand to people who might not know about the brand yet. I think that the, the lifestyle aspect is exciting to me as well. You know, that there are multiple ways that you can reach a customer. We just, we, we started a food business that's very nascent yeah. in Los Angeles that's doing extremely well, but I think it's a great way to deliver on the beauty and wellness from a different angle, right? We're always just trying to push further um, and think about the different ways that we can connect with the customer and think about, you know, the exciting products that we have in the pipeline. And there's a lot still left to do. I'm very proud of us and how, where we've been able to get to. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Do you ever look back, Gwyneth, and say, I left behind, not completely, obviously, but I left behind an incredibly successful <laughs> acting career. Do you miss that part of your life, to be on sets all the time and traveling and doing all those things? 
No, I don't. I really don't miss it at all. I think I'm so lucky that I got to do it and I still, I'm sure I still will at some point. You know, I did promise my mother that at some point, like if we ever sell the company or if I am not CEO or at some point before I die, I told her that I would go and, you know, do a play. So I'm going to stick, I'm going to, I'm going to deliver on that promise at some point. Okay. When I'm, Get you on Broadway, yes, West End. Yes, that's something. what she would like. Okay. So, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> you also, what a gift to be able to have this period in your life with your kids, which I know was yeah. intentional. Has that been maybe even the best part of all this, that you haven't been flying all over the world, that you've been home with the kids? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, especially now that I do have one going off to college, you realize how finite, it just, it went so quickly. And you're right, you know, I used to be, I was, I was talking to my son about this the other day, actually, that I used to be in, I used to take him and his friends in London to a kickboxing class every Wednesday. And I would be editing the newsletter on my iPad because it would go out, you know, Thursday morning. And, but I was always there. I was always in this basement in Swiss cottage in England, you know, like yeah. at the kickboxing. And so I was, I was able to be there for most of it, which I really appreciate because I mean, being on set is amazing, but the hours are long. I mean, you know, sometimes 18 hours. So there were certain times when, when I did do movies, when I had them and I, you know, I would leave the house before they woke up and I would come home after they were already asleep. And that was tough. So I feel very blessed that I've been able to try to pursue this other career and kind of like keep hours, you know, where I'm, I'm able to be home and make them dinner and stuff like that. I was interested to hear you say in another interview that you're almost more comfortable doing this than you were doing movies. You seem so at ease as an actor and you did so well with it, <laughs> but you sort of said despite, you know, your parents being in the business, it didn't really feel like home to you. You yeah. didn't love the fame that came with it and all that. What did you mean when you said that? Well, I think it's a few things. I mean, and it's a bit of a double-edged sword, right? Because fame is also incredible and brings with it amazing things and opportunities. And I was able to leverage that to start Goop. And, you know, I still do in, in a lot of ways. Um, but I think, you know, having done now in my corporate life, like having done Myers-Briggs a couple times, like I'm an introvert. I always really? test. Yes. And so I'm sort of a fake extrovert who's had to get comfortable being like pretending to be an extrovert and I'm really not. So I don't love being in front of the camera. I don't love being the center of attention. I hate speaking in public. And I've had to learn all those skills to sort of like prop myself up and do it anyway. But I'm much happier in a much more quiet, private scenario. And I'm much more internal, I think, than people would probably expect. And you were watching your mom, the wonderful Blythe Danner, as a, as a young girl. Yes. Having an exciting life and playing these incredible parts. Yeah. And so that's probably, right, you were just kind of following exactly. what she was doing. You know, my mother, when I was, I spent so much time sitting, watching her rehearse plays. It was like my, such a giant part of my childhood. And she was just so incredibly powerful. And she had such freedom on stage. And so I was like, well, I want to do that as a job because yeah. that looks, you know, but I, I didn't realize that there were other means to that. I thought, you know, you have to be an actress in order to really be real, you know, self-realize like my mom, but, and I'm, and I wouldn't change anything, uh, you know, and, and especially when I look back on certain times in my life or certain roles or um, certain plays I did or certain movies that, you know, had an impact on people. I'm so happy that I did all of that. You know, that was really special and a very unique life. So when you were coming up, trying to be like your mom, it was kind of just for fun. Mm -hmm. What was the point at which you said, oh, this could be my life. This could be my career. My parents always said that I always said I wanted to be an actress from the time I could speak. And so I was very focused on it. And I knew, I knew when I was in high school that I was going to do it and I was going to be able to have some success. Like I could feel it, you know? And so I don't know if I could feel it because it was going to happen or I manifested it because I had that belief, but um, I never questioned it. I, I really, I had a very like strong bullseye, <laughs> you know, that I was going, moving towards. You went on this 
incredible run of like seven Emma sliding doors into Shakespeare in Love where you win the Oscar mm -hmm. and clearly your life is turned upside down. Yeah. The camera's chasing you everywhere. Yeah. What was that transition like in your life? Very overwhelming. It's very intense. You know, there's like a, I, I crossed a threshold at some point. I, I'm, I think it was probably around the time of winning the Oscar where, you know, you go from people kind of being curious about you or discovering you or rooting for you to the whole, to it all being upended and people really wanting to tear you down and take great pleasure in it um, and wanting to know everything about you in a way that can feel really intrusive. And it was really intense. I mean, really, really intense. Totally I had scary days where, at times. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, where you're thinking there's going to be car accidents mm. and people are tapping your phone and writing all kinds of stuff about you that is not true. And it's a lot. And it gets away from you. You can't control all that, right? You can't put no. your finger in every hole in the dam. You just have to. Which ends up being a really beautiful lesson because it's really just a microcosm. It's, and it's really just a lesson in knowing who you are, loving the people you love, being totally in integrity, and like, f everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know you cannot say on morning television. We bleep that. You set the candle, you open the door to whatever. Now. Okay, good. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it seems like probably that was part of the reason, too, where you were already thinking about spinning out of acting because you didn't love the extra stuff that came with it which brought you to this place, to Goop in some yeah. ways. I think that's true. And of course, like, as I said, you know, I still am the public, like, consumer-facing person for the brand, too. So I have to stay a little bit connected to the public, which is fine. But also, I think that I'm older now, and I'm not doing movies with so much regularity. It's, like, simmered down a bit, which mm -hmm. feels really nice. So when you think, Gwyneth, about the Hollywood side of your life now, mm -hmm. what? does it take to get you involved? Because you've done some cool stuff, right? Politician and a bunch of other things. Little, yeah, little bits here and there. I mean, if my husband was doing something and wanted me to do it, I would do it. Mm -hmm. I think I would work with friends if they wanted me, you know, like people that I know and love and if it wasn't too big of a part kind of a thing. Yep. Um, Iron Man? I mean, if... I don't, I don't, I don't see how that could happen unless it was like a prequel. But then we would be too old, right? <laughs> right, so, right? But sure, I mean. Were those fun to drop into and play that cool very character? Fun, very yeah. fun. Yeah. And you know, Robert Downey is just like such a spectacular person. He's remained a very, very close friend of mine for yeah. all these years. So I would always do something with Robert if he needed me for something. And if that was Iron Man, then I'll, I'd be there. You heard it here first. <laughs>
I was a mess. And so I thought, oh boy, 50 is going to be, it's going to feel, and I feel so good. Like, I'm so happy to be turning 50. I feel so grateful. I think I grieved a lot of the, the peace around, like, the physical part. You know, I think when you grow up in the culture very much and, like, pictures of you everywhere and you turn 40, people make such a big deal about it that you think, like, oh, my God, I'm, you know, I'm over the hill, like... And, and so there's a kind of grief and letting go of that youth in a way. But that I think also when I was turning 40, and I always say this like to my friends and my team, like I, I felt like then I turned 40 and I got this amazing software upgrade, which really felt like, oh, this is actually kind of great. And like, I feel like I can be who I am a little bit more and I have permission. Totally. And now I feel like that times a hundred and I just feel like this is who I am and I, I really like myself and I really know all of my flaws and I'm really working on them, but like I'm okay being where I am and I'm okay being who I am. And so I'm excited to turn 50. I'm, I'm really excited about it actually. Um, well, cool. I, th I think we're going to try out a product. Oh, great. Which has some relationship to morning television. I'm going to help you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know about all this stuff before you started Goop? No. Were you into this? I mean, you were into skincare, but you didn't know. I was all the always into skincare. That's right. I didn't know what ingredients at you know are active at what level and that kind of thing. And like, what is the alternative, like the non-toxic alternative for, you know, X, Y, and Z. So that's been really fascinating to really like dive into the science and understand. It's pretty cool what you've done. Thank you. You've kind you. of blown open a market, <laughs> haven't you? I mean, we're. I think we definitely helped kind of usher in the clean beauty movement and first in writing about it and before we made our own products and then um, I really did see like a white space there I didn't see any luxury clean skincare and um, and so now we're just trying to make products that you know that are people's favorites and that they keep coming back and back for and so it's great it's exciting well, congrats on Thanks. the big success of it thank you everyone watching today all day. I'm Joe Fryer in for Carson here on Pop Star Plus. Coming up, our conversation with actor and comedian Joe Coy. He stopped by for our What I Watch series and told us all about his new movie, Easter Sunday. Then one of our favorites, Chrissy Metz. The actress joined the third hour to update us on her latest music. And last but not least, a clip from our vault to celebrate the late Paul Sorvino and his unforgettable role in Goodfellas. But first, today's pop start with Chanel, starting with news about a legend who recently hinted his 60-year career could soon come to a close, Steve Martin. So first up, Steve Martin. The iconic comedian's life story is getting the Hollywood treatment. Yesterday, The Hollywood Reporter revealed plans for a two-part feature about Martin's career, and it has some serious star power behind the camera. Mr. Rogers' documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Director Morgan Neville wow. will helm the project. You might recall, back in 2007, Martin's memoir, it was called Born Standing Up, hit the New York Times bestseller list. Well, now, Steve promises this new project will go way, way back to his origin story. He told The Hollywood Reporter that the filmmakers have a lot of archival material Material, including a photo of his father from Germany in 1944 touring a production of Our Town wow. with the USO. Should be good. No word yet on when the feature will be released, but it's scheduled to debut on Apple TV+. All right, next up, Madonna. The material girl is proving she can rock even the smallest of performances. Last night, the Queen of Pop visited this Tonight Show to join Jimmy and the Roots for a classroom instruments rendition. Oh, I love, I love this. this too. This is of her 2000 hit music. Check it out. That is that's so awesome. Hard. That's a hard song to do, yes. like acoustic. Yeah, they nailed it. Instruments, let's not and the guy with the xylophone on the phone. That yeah. even I good. wish I could be there when they're just hanging out having yeah. a time. Yeah. Oh, so good. All right, next up, The Simpsons. The long-running right. cartoon has been, of course, known for its incredible ability to predict the future. Well, check out this episode from season 12. You may remember when Lisa referred to a President Trump 
16 years before he was elected. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. How bad is it, Secretary Van Houten? We're broke. Okay, so over the years, fans have also pointed out how the show gave us a sneak peek at FaceTime technology, wow. Olympic results, and so much more. Well, after decades of creepy coincidences popping up on the show, they're talking about it. Executive producer Matt Selman says The Simpsons is finally going to reveal how that magic is done. In a new interview, he told Deadline about an upcoming episode that will explain how The Simpsons know the future. Because, of course, it's true, right? He says it's a conceptual episode with lots of crazy <laughs> stuff in it, but it does an explanation of how The Simpsons can predict the future. Oh. So what does that mean? I have no idea, but no. We'll, just, <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see when The Simpsons returns 34 for its years? 34th wow. season. Wow. What, what season were you a part of? You were in... I was, I was 2000... The, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually Marge. Uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, uh, the 30th season. 30th, and you yeah. played yourself. I played me. Uh, Bart came to uh, Rockefeller Center. I mean, fun. how fun. Yeah. I know. Maybe for 30th the 35th season. You there you go. All right, next up, Stranger Things. After four wildly successful seasons, audiences have come to know and love the young actors, of course, behind Netflix's hit series. But back when the show started, those kids were all virtually unheard of. So just how did they land roles on one of streaming's biggest shows? In a new interview with Vanity Fair, casting director Carmen Cuba is pulling back the curtain and revealing a sneak peek at the Hawking Gang's audition tapes wow. from when they were all between 10 and 13 years old. You want to see some? Yeah. All right, get ready for some serious throwback cuteness. Look at this. I am Noah Schnapp. I'm 10 years old. Am I weird? I am Finn Wolfhard. I'm sick. I'm late. Uh, I'm 4 foot 11. I'm 12 years old. Except I didn't tie it to a string. It was actually flying. This could be the most excellent promise you can make. I have absolute power. My name is Millie Brown. I'm 11 years old. You killed me. I can see it. That's how she got that role. Oh, yeah. I mean, she was 11. Here's the thing. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but even though Millie Bobby Brown, she's British in real life. Right. But if you notice on that, she introduced herself in an American ac accent. Wow. So they were like, oh man, she's she can do it. There's more you need to know since this is, of course, Pop Start Plus. First up, Chris Evans. The actor is revealing how a mistake in the wardrobe department led to an adorable twinning moment with his dog, Dodger. Check this out. So do you recognize that diamond print polo? It's the same one Chris was wearing in his latest action flick, The Gray Man. Well, apparently wardrobe shrunk one of his character's shirts and let Chris take it home for the pup. I think we know what Dodger is going to be for this Halloween this year. Up next, Justin Timberlake. Get ready for this earworm to make a comeback. Do you remember how in 2016 it seemed like everyone was playing can't stop the feeling from the troll soundtrack. Well, on this week's episode of America's Got Talent, the Players Choir brought back Timberlake's pop hit. Now, this group of former NFL pros gave an a cappella rendition that had the audience up and dance, dance, dancing. Check this out. Yeah, those guys know how to get a party started. Plus, they even earned the stamp of approval from JT himself. Timberlake retweeted the show clip, giving it the little raised hands emoji. Unfortunately, the players did not make it to AGT's next round, but they shared on social media how blessed and grateful they are for the opportunity to be on stage this season. And finally, Missy Elliott. Miss A, the princess is here, and we mean right here. Take a look. This Portsmouth, Virginia street is being renamed Missy Elliott Boulevard, formerly known as McLean Street. This week, the local city council unanimously voted to rename the block in honor of the Grammy winner. And it's a special treat for the hit rapper and singer who grew up in the area. Yesterday, Missy tweeted, I am forever grateful, P-Down. Congrats to Miss Demeter. Those are your Pop Star Plus headlines. Still to come, actor and comedian Joe Coy on what he loves to watch when he needs a laugh. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. 
This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Joe Coy brings the laughs on his Netflix stand-up specials, his comedy tours, and now in his first feature film. And I recently had the chance to sit down with him. I'm here with actor and stand-up comic Joe Coy for another episode of today's What I Watch series, where we ask folks about what they love to watch. And we're eager to hear what's on your list, Joe. You're also in a new movie coming out called Easter Sunday, so yes. we'll ask you a few questions about that in a moment. But first, let's get to your list of what you like to watch. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You don't know what's coming, are you? No. All right. All right. So what do you like to watch? This is an easy one. When yeah. you need a good laugh. Good laugh, Tommy Boy. Ah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's a classic. It, it's joke after joke. I love physical humor. Truck tire. Eh, I can't stop. Ah, ah, help! There's a cliff. Ah! Chris Farley was a genius at that. that and then, one? of course, Spade. His timing was just impeccable. Is that the one where in the car they're singing, Don't You Remember You Telling Me You Love Me, Baby? Yeah, baby. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? That was so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. All right, twist on this one. What do you love to watch when you when you're feeling sad? When I'm feeling sad, I want something to lift me up. Yes, sure. Oof, uh, you know the kid movies. So like like Goonies, something like that would make me uh, feel good about myself. Okay. Yeah, because so it brings back you back childhood. to when you were a kid and everything was fun. Which so my next question was, what reminds you of your childhood? What do you like to watch that reminds you of your childhood? Ooh. Is that what those are, or is there something else? No, there. Uh, another one for my childhood would be, uh, man, delirious Eddie Murphy oh. stand up. Yeah. <laughs> It's a classic right oh, there. Oh, classic. All right, yeah. so if you need comfort, some comfort food, but in the form of something to watch, a movie, television. Ooh, something that's comforting? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, it would be probably Mission Impossible, because it just keeps me going. Like, I, I get happy, uh, I feel like I can jump a building, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I want to be Cruise for uh, just two hours. Let me be Tom Cruise for two hours. Maybe that can be your next movie, like something like that. L like, done. Action. Let's go, yes. <laughs> Minority Report 2. There you go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> what do you watch that might surprise people? Uh, documentaries. I love documentaries, and I've always loved them since I was you know, a kid. And what's crazy is my son loves documentaries. So I, I believe in this DNA thing, man. <laughs> I saw my son at like at eight. He was like watching documentaries. I was like, I used to do that. So I love that. That's very cool. And then anything you're watching right now that you're currently obsessed with, it's like your thing right now. Uh, currently obsessed with would have to be Jurassic Park is something that I still always go to. Those are the, the go-to movies that I can just click on and watch. All right, let's talk about something that we hope a lot of people are going to be watching. That's your new movie, Easter Sunday. It's a new film from our parent company, NBC Universal. Anything you watch to prepare for that film or anything to help inspire it? Ooh, uh, man, no. Because your life inspired it, right? Yeah. I guess in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, yeah, I just, uh, I would, I would uh, no lie, I would watch just all my favorite comics. 
that that moved to the to the big screen and and literally like learn how they kept themselves in their characters. You know, who, who are some that come to mind? That, that... Uh, like Bernie, you know, Bernie stayed himself. You know, Bernie Mac was great. Yeah. He just memorized his lines and just and delivered it as Bernie Mac. I'm not saying that's what I did. What I'm right. saying is. I was a student just seeing that transition from stand-up to acting. All right, what should we know about Easter Sunday? How do you sum up the plot for folks? Um, it, it's a family movie, first and foremost. I think we, we've uh, always said if it's too specific, like no one's gonna get it. Well, it's like, no, that's everyone's gonna get it. It's just because my family's Filipino doesn't mean you're not gonna get a story between the father and the son and the mother and the daughter. Like, you get it. A family is a family, no matter what they are. What, what do you hope this does not just for you, but for the Filipino American community to have a movie like this oh, by a major studio out there. That's beautiful that you said that. And, and I, I, I don't hope, I know it's going to happen. And But not only just for Filipinos, but AAPI alone. And just any immigrant that comes to this country, any immigrant, you know what I mean? Where they come here and they feel invisible. You know, you watch TV and you watch... You know these movies, and and you, you not only sometimes you feel misrepresented or not represented at all, and it sucks. You know, and this movie right here is going to show the world that it doesn't matter who you are, what color you are, uh, your story is relevant and it's relatable, very relatable. That being said, you must feel a little bit of pressure. I'm uh, a lot, a <laughs> lot of pressure. But you know what? I got I got the hand of. Steven Spielberg blessing this project, and, and I know people are going to be proud of what, what we did with this movie. I have to ask you, our friends at the third hour of today's show were asking, bringing up the fact that you had a recent breakup with Chelsea Handler, oh, and you yeah. said something, you said you're still very close with your exes, which I think yeah. is pretty incredible, and, and that's maybe a good lesson for folks, right? I, I think what it is is you you have an option to learn, right? Like, so I'm, I'm a product of a divorced uh, family, right? Yeah. A divorced parents, and, uh, and I saw how they fought tooth and nail. And I mean, to this day, they still have, you know, a rough relationship. And it, the only person that suffered were, were the kids. So when my ex and I broke up, my, my, my son's mommy, we became best friends. It's like, okay, we can't be together. We're, that's fine, but we're parents. So my son needs parents, strong parents. And we're the best of friends, man. So I've always had that approach when it comes to relationships. It's like, yeah, Chelsea and I have always been friends. You know, before we were together, we were friends and after. It's like, I'm always gonna be her biggest cheerleader and she's gonna crush it. Where she's all your, always gonna crush it. We're all your cheerleader right now. Oh. Joe Coy, best of luck with Easter Sunday. We appreciate you. you speaking with us. Such an absolute pleasure getting to hang with Joe. Check out his movie, Easter Sunday. It's in theaters now. Up next, we are chatting with Chrissy Metz about her other great talent, singing. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feels like Christmas or my birthday or something. <laughs> These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feels like Christmas or my birthday or something. <laughs> now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this?
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. We're back. Chrissy Metz is best known for her role as Kate on This Is Us. But not only can she act, she can also sing. And she updated a third hour about that part of her career, going on tour and everything else that's going on in her life. This morning, we are delighted to be catching up with the multi-talented Chrissy Metz. You know, we all love her as Kate Pearson on NBC's oh, yes. hit show, This Is Us. Well, now Chrissy is switching gears and hitting the road to perform some of her new country music on a seven-city tour. And she's here to tell us all about it. Good morning. Hey, y'all. Hey. Chrissy. Hey. Good morning. Hey. Yeah. It's so nice to see you all. Well, uh, well, it's been you know, a minute. I, yeah. I, I know. It's been a while. It's, 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 so much has been happening. But I, I knew you, you you had all this musical talent, but I didn't know how much you love country music. Oh, yeah. I mean, music was like my first love. And I grew up in Florida. And I also was just influenced by all genres of music. My mm. parents love music. And... I just feel like country music, the, the storytelling aspect is so special. Mm-hmm. And I yes. think I love to do that as we can we can tell yeah. from the TV show I happen to be on. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it just it just felt right. It's so interesting because a lot of people would think the acting was first and then the music, but it was, it's clear that music is a love of yours, right? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, I was making tapes in my, my bedroom <laughs> in my boom box and you know, trying to record and write poetry, but. Oh, I love that. So what was the inspiration behind this, new, this music? Really like love, loss, the past 10 years of my life, like gratitude, but also really healing through the feeling. And for a yeah, long time, feeling. right? Let's <laughs> marinate. Yes. <laughs> okay. For a long time, I was afraid to feel because like, it's uncomfortable. Yep. You have to go through it, and the only way to go is through. Mm-hmm. So I found music always to be really cathartic, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's healed me in many ways. So writing and being able to perform the songs now is like a dream. Yeah. It's like unreal. So exciting. So let's let's talk about uh, this is us. Yes. You know, my wife and I, we just love the show so much. You wrapped it up a few months ago. Yeah. I read somewhere that you are open to the idea, perhaps of a reunion down the road. Uh, yeah, like 10 years from now. Yeah. Like, yeah. How it's too, it it's too raw right now. Yeah. It's too raw. It's too soon. What it's part too soon. of the story do you think would mm. be the impetus for the for the reunion? Is there a part that, that left you wanting a bit more? Ooh. You know, oh gosh. I mean, the stories of people's lives like continue yeah. for years and, and decades. So I don't know. I think it could be anything. Mm. But it would... I love to see kids grow up and like mm-hmm. what Tess and Annie would be doing yes. and Jack and Haley. Right. I mean, obviously we know Jack, spoiler alert, becomes a really big famous music uh, guy, but um, I don't know. I think there could go, it could go anywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I'm down for it. Okay. If Dan Fogelman's involved, Dan. Okay, you're in. then you're in. All right, Dan. Yeah, you yeah. put it out in the universe, so we'll, we'll check in in 10 years. Right. Um, <laughs> let's talk about your children's book because you're yeah. also an author. You wrote this with your boyfriend. Yeah. When I talk to God, I talk about you yeah. is the name of it. Tell us about it. Yeah, so over the pandemic, you know, people are, you know, really getting to know one another. And it was, I mean, the beginning of my relationship with my boyfriend. But, you know, you sort of talk about, like, do you want kids? Do you not? And Mm -hmm. I taught preschool. I have a huge family. And I love kids. And I just know that it's so important, the foundation of, like, encouraging them and empowering them and supporting them. But also we had a lot of friends who want to become parents, Mm -hmm. whether it's adoption or fostering or biologically. And so it was really just the impact of like we understand the desire to want to have that connective tissue with children and how important it is Mm -hmm. like as cheesy as it sounds children really are the future yeah Mm -hmm. so it really just blossomed from that yeah yeah and and you guys just celebrated your second anniversary we did congratulations yo we got through covid together i know can you believe it that's wild really it's like we've been together for 10 years (laughs) if you've gone through a pandemic together and he's also a songwriter so he is. there's a synergy there too yeah we've written once and then i was like you know what i really want him to have his thing mm-hmm. and i don't want to sort of taint it with like my ideas or you know and vice versa i think it's really important for people to have their own thing but he is he's a very deep guy mm-hmm. like still waters run deep so mm-hmm. it's um it's nice it's great yeah. Oh, we're so excited for you. Thank and you. Uh, good luck with the tour. Good luck. Thank you. Everything. Next time, oh, come and goodness. perform here in the studio. I know. Okay. All right. Okay. We're already I booked. Will. Love to. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm booked. I'm booked. Great, Chrissy, thanks <laughs> thank so you. much. Hey, uh, Chrissy's tour kicks off tonight in, Philly. in Philadelphia, Chanel's town. Yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, you can go to her website for all tour dates and details. And remember, all seasons of This Is Us available on Hulu and NBC.com. Oh, my gosh. Have the best time tonight. Thank you. 
so talented that Chrissy Metz. Still to come, we're going to remember the late, great Paul Servino from his Goodfellas days. Stay with us. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Mr. Secretary, when is this going to get better? You came into this job saying you were to fight crime. Have you been successful? Found a way to put that. Can you update us on the status of negotiations? Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. The entertainment world lost an icon last month when Paul Sorvino passed away at 83 years old. He was beloved for his role as a mob boss in Goodfellas, and in his honor, we pulled this clip from our vault from 1990 of Mr. Sorvino talking about that part and another one of his loves, singing opera. Such a sweet and lovable guy. <laughs> How did you come to play this tough character? Well, uh, How did Scorsese come to think of you, do you think? Yeah, I know he liked my work because when we finally met and I'd, I'd been looking to work with him for 10 years, he told me as much. I didn't have to sell him on me. We had a meeting and we both loved each other, so there was no, there was no doubt that I was going to do the role. My problem was the artistic uh, problem, solving the problem of finding that... Uh, cold dark place that uh, from which these actions could spring and that took months but your background is from brooklyn and you are italian yes but italian american life has nothing to do with italian american gangster life i mean the there are some four thousand um identified uh, mafiosi who are italian american and there are some 20 or 30 million italian americans so they're there's no connection between mob life and the Italian-American uh, experience. It's completely different. That's a distinction that's very important to make, too. Well, I think that uh, so many people can look at this. It's as if one would say that all Russians are Cossacks and rob and uh, rape women in villages. Uh, because Cossacks are Russian, therefore Russians are Cossacks. Because uh, mobster, mafiosi are Italian, uh, then uh, Italians are mafiosi. And that's a very unfortunate thing. Of course, this isn't your first gangster role. This summer... In the spirit of fun, you were lips manless. Lips manless and with Dick the big Tracy. lips, right? Yeah. Did, was that fun to do that? Moment? It was. Yes, I'd never played with so much makeup on my face, and to walk by and not rec not be recognized by people who know you very well, just walk right by them and have no idea who you are. Of course, those of us who know and love Paul Sorvino think of you also as a singer. Your very early ambition was to be a singer. Yes. You want to be an opera singer. In fact, you sang in Seattle not long ago at the I, opera company. That's right. I sang six performances of Deflator Mouse as Alfred, the, the lead-headed tenor. <laughs> and, and I played him sort of as Pavarotti because they wanted the quintessential Italian tenor. So I, uh, I do like this. She tells me, please don't <laughs> sing. You know what it does to me? I say, I know. That's the way I do. <laughs> so I play like Mr. Pavarotti because he's so identify with Italian tenor. That's a marvelous impersonation. I love that. Suppose there was a law. You could either be world famous as an opera star or world famous as an actor. Which would you choose? Well, if you'll forgive me, that law is being constructed apparently because I've been offered Othello next season uh, at a major opera house and, uh, and I have two or three different movie offers on my desk at the moment. So uh, that... <laughs> <laughs> that confrontation is about to be witnessed. 
Uh, I don't know, and what I would say is I would probably do both. I would probably sing opera for a good point, part of the year, and I would probably uh, involve myself in certain movie projects that I really um, find would express the most important parts of my personality not yet unfolded to the public. Let's talk about Goodfellas for a minute. Yeah. You play a gang leader, uh, a mob leader, and it's a very interesting movie because it is based on fact. It's based on uh, a book called Wise Guys. Don't put too many onions in the sauce. When I first read it, I thought, well, this will make a good movie. But the real reason to make this movie is that, uh, to be in this movie, is that Mr. Scorsese is going to direct it. Uh, then after I got on board, then Bobby De Niro uh, got on board and a few others. And then I knew that we were going to have quite an event. Some red wine. Okay. Now we could eat. I'm going to throw a curve at you. Sure. Would you do a little a cappella just so people realize what a great singer you are? Well, I can do, let's see, uh, uh, do a little something from Othello. And I haven't vocalized, and it's, I've only been up for 45 minutes. It's let's early see. in the morning, but here we go. Paul Sorvino. Paul Sorvino, in the best sense of the word, you are a good fellow. Thank you. Paul Sorvino, so greatly missed. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Pop Star Plus. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. So long for now. Our friends in today all day land we hope you were enjoying your your thursday and thanks for tuning in to today and thursday why did you say friday I, I was gonna say it later well we say yeah save it for later guys um this is our special blend of all the things we hope you love across all four hours of our show but we, we boil it down to 30 minutes we do in fact folks we're going to start once again with the fallout facing former president trump after apparently he said very little to investigators that were looking into his business practices yeah and then we're going to give you an exclusive sneak peek at a much anticipated new documentary it takes a really revealing new look at the highs and lows of princess diana and her life in the spotlight and it was another star-studded morning here in studio one and chrissy metz joined us on the third hour to talk about her new music tour and someone who knows a thing or two about music was on the fourth hour Luda! Luda Christmas here. Yeah, I heard he gets a little animated in his new project. We're going to find out. Let's not wait one second longer. Let's do it. Today in, in 30. 30. NBC's Chief White House Correspondent Kristen Welker joins us with the latest on that and the FBI search carried out at Trump's Florida home earlier this week. Kristen, good morning to you. Hi, Craig. Good morning to you. Former President Trump is facing mounting legal pressure on multiple fronts with new fallout from that FBI search on his Mar-a-Lago estate and reports overnight the bureau may have had help from a Trump world insider. This comes as the former president sat for a civil deposition on Wednesday, as you said, that could have its own ripple effects. This morning, new details are emerging about the latest legal challenge for former President Trump. According to a source with knowledge of the case, Mr. Trump invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination more than 440 times during a deposition that lasted four hours. It's part of a civil investigation of his business practices by New York Attorney General Letitia James. His lawyer says he answered one question his name, and read a statement accusing James and her team of a witch hunt. This after he previously mocked others for invoking the fifth. Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment. Horrible. Horrible. You see, the mob takes the fifth. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? 
Now I know the answer to that question, Mr. Trump said in a statement before the deposition, saying his family, company, and people in his orbit were political targets. Mr. Trump also saying the FBI's search of his Mar-a-Lago estate on Monday in an unrelated investigation solidified his decision to take the fifth, calling Monday's search a surprise attack, even though the Bureau was executing a court-approved search warrant. That search connected to classified documents from the Trump administration. And this morning, reports that an insider may have provided information to authorities. The Wall Street Journal reporting that someone familiar with the stored papers told investigators there may be still more classified documents at the private club after the National Archives retrieved 15 boxes earlier in the year. People familiar with the matter told the journal NBC News has not confirmed that report. It comes as pressure is mounting on the Justice Department to explain its actions. A current senior Justice Department official and a former DOJ official telling NBC News multiple officials within the DOJ believe Attorney General Merrick Garland should make a public statement explaining the need for the search. FBI Director Christopher Wray, who was appointed by Mr. Trump, was asked about the former president's baseless claims agents may have planted evidence at Mar-a-Lago during the search. That's not something that I can talk about, so I'd refer you to the department. But Ray did condemn the surge in violent threats against law enforcement by some Trump supporters online in the wake of Monday. And that undoubtedly will continue to get more fallout. Now, one more really interesting note that we want to point out. Former President Trump in 2018 strengthened a law for how people would be punished for mishandling classified information, basically strengthening that law from a misdemeanor to a felony. It's a move he made after criticizing Hillary Clinton for mishandling sensitive information in her emails. Craig. All right. Chief White House correspondent Kristen Walker for Kristen, thank you. Consumer Confidential Time, we've been focusing on stories that impact the bottom line around this time every morning. Yes, so today we're all about that morning staple for many Americans, coffee. In fact, the latest figures show consumption at a two-decade high. In fact, there's a pretty good chance you're drinking a cup of joe while you watch us right now. (laughs) Uh, Unfortunately, like most everything else, the cost of that cup of coffee it's also way up. NBC Sam Brock joins us now to break it all down. Uh, break it all down. Sam, what's going on with coffee now? You know what? It's like everything is going up. Everyone feels that way, Craig. And we start our coffee routine in the morning at 4 or 5 a.m. For most people, maybe slightly more normal hours, 6 or 7. But the point is, it is essential. Two out of every three Americans have at least one cup of coffee every single day. It's now about $4 for a regular cup. A specialty like this latte, $5 a cup. If you extrapolate that over the course of a week, you're looking at about $30 per week. Of course, we all have more than one cup of coffee per day, making this a very expensive habit. Whether you like it hot, iced, or even frozen, enjoying a cup of coffee is how millions of Americans start their day. But even though so many have a whole lot of love for the bean, it's becoming increasingly costly to get that morning caffeine rush. The price of everything is going up, but I normally drink coffee at home on less special occasions. I know what it is. I hope you like it. Okay. In North Dallas, Brittany Willis is a franchise owner of a PJ's Coffee of New Orleans. She says everything from cooking oil to cups now costs more, pushing coffee prices up too. Inflation is really challenging. I've been very hesitant to increase my prices, you know, but you get to a point as a business owner where you have to say, am I looking to sustain and survive so I can continue to offer this product? The National Coffee Association reports about two thirds of Americans drink a cup of Joe every day, the highest figure in decades. But many average Joes do appear to be adjusting to new circumstances. Coffee now is uh, not something of an everyday going out. It's more of a treat. And here's why. It's now more than $4 for a regular coffee, 9% higher than this time last year. For a specialty cup, that's more than $5, up 7% according to industry data, which means troubles brewing for budgets. Necessities like food and gasoline have already eaten into discretionary spending. Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz jolting investors in June. It's hard to be optimistic unless there is a plan to get inflation under control. While the inflation rate is slowing slightly, high prices are still a major issue for everyday consumers. The cost of food at home up 1.3% in July, while coffee nearly tripled that figure in the same month. 
Businesses like Brittany's hoping high prices don't grind away demand. Coffee as a whole continues to grow and we're actually seeing uh, sales inc increases um, as a result. I mean, what's better than a warm or a cold cup of coffee? So for those who are thinking, all right, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to skip the coffee shop for now, drink at home. I'll save money that way because we talked about the fact, guys, that coffee's up 7 to 9%. Instant coffee, like these cherry cups, are up 17%. At home coffee, according to the latest CPI, up 20%, more than double what this coffee is. So what we're seeing right now is a trend of people who are working from home. They come to the coffee shops. They enjoy the experience, spend all day here, and maybe spend less money than they would brewing on their stove. So just let that percolate a little bit, oh, simmer just wow. for a little while. I'm not going to say something really cheesy like it's mocha me crazy. Oh, but you kind of get the gist so of this. So Coffee's gosh. definitely on the that was We're so proud of you, Sam. That was probably the tenth pun in Sam's You've show. gone full today's show oh, now, my friend. I was going for a record. I love it. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We are back with the new documentary, Taking Viewers Inside the Life of Princess Diana in a really unprecedented way. Yeah, it's called The Princess. It premieres this weekend on HBO, but this morning we are getting an exclusive first look from the team behind it. Today, senior international correspondent Keir Simmons is here with that. Good morning to you. Thank you. Hey, guys. Good mm -hmm. morning to you. Can you believe two and a half decades since mm -hmm. uh, Princess Diana decade. died? There have been many documentaries about Princess Diana, but this one is unique, immersive they call it, as we approach the 25th anniversary of her death, the filmmakers have used TV clips and video archive from the Diana years to trace her life and transport you back to that tumultuous royal era. The princess has been the best thing to happen to the monarchy in centuries. Did you get a chance to see her? Yes! Diana is very big news everywhere. Princess Diana was a global icon. Millions feeling connected to her, even before the era of social media. A hollow and tormented marriage are giving the British media and its public little else to talk about. Now, a new HBO documentary, simply called The Princess, is turning back the clock, laying out key events in her life as they happened. British producer Simon Chin and director Ed Perkins gave us an exclusive insight into their work. The challenge for us was to do something that was just entirely different, that kind of enabled you audiences to come at the story in a different way. It's not only to kind of create a sort of time machine where we take audiences back into all of our past, but it really is to allow the film to kind of act as a bit of a mirror. The film, a gripping timeline of Diana's life in the public eye, using only archival material. Then, Lady Spencer was 19 when she stepped into the public limelight. Her engagement to Prince Charles in 1981, the beginning of what seemed like a fairy tale. What was your instant impression? Well, I remember thinking what a very jolly and amusing and, and attractive 16-year-old she was. I don't know what you thought of me. But... Pretty amazing. <laughs> The film documents the highs and lows. Her wedding day, watched by 750 million people, and perhaps her happiest moments, the birth of her two sons, William and Harry. Diana's subtle character, relatable, 
making her the people's princess. She actually didn't speak that often publicly throughout her life, but she did have this kind of extraordinary ability through her own body language to tell her story. The princess asks difficult questions about the constant scrutiny and controversy that followed Diana everywhere. As her marriage to the Prince of Wales unraveled, the press obsessed over every appearance. She has a sick mind. She likes to be with people. She likes to be bloody well to watched. Be. In retrospect, her interdependent and tumultuous relationship with the media looks like a foreshadowing of today's world. It's the media that's causing the problems. Leave them alone. I think we've got an unhealthy obsession. Ultimately, the controversy forcing Diana to limit public life. When I started my public life 12 years ago, I understood the media might be interested in what I did, but I was not aware of how overwhelming that attention would become. And then, that unexpected, tragic end, a car accident that stunned the world. Mourners gathered around her home in Kensington Palace for days. This became a, literally a sort of sea of flowers from as, for as far as you can see it. The global outpouring of grief and anger that spiralled and still resonates almost 25 years after her passing. This film is about Diana, but actually this film is about all of us. It's about what Diana meant to us. The film premiered at the Sundance Festival earlier this year and will be available on HBO and HBO Max on Saturday. And Samana, guys, we were just talking about you were a young journalist, I was a young journalist when she died. Uh, and I remember being woken up in the middle of the night yeah. um, and then the news. It, it's, it's impossible to describe how shocking it was. Oh, and then out on the streets of London, yeah. it was like a royal revolution with those mm. flowers. People were furious, sobbing. Uh, it, it does feel like it was a, a different era, but kind of said something about our era today. Yeah, yeah. It, as you said, it was sort of a foreshadowing. Yeah. But it does feel like it was yesterday, doesn't it? I know. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. It's, it's been 25, 25 years. years. Wow. It's cool to get that sneak peek. We'll be watching when it comes out in a few weeks. Great. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Kier. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Jackson now weekdays at five on NBC News now live from Ukraine from Uvalde Texas from Mayfield Kentucky to cover the news you have to be in it this is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves you can actually see they're pushing the gates open was there a school officer on campus that's what we've been told no do you remember any tornado as bad as this one you look at this and you're thinking we're not gonna have power for weeks if not months exactly every night it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This morning, we are delighted to be catching up with the multi-talented Chrissy Metz. You know, we all love her as Kate Pearson oh, on NBC's yes. hit show, This Is Us. Well, now Chrissy is switching gears and hitting the road to perform some of her new 
country music on a seven city tour, and she is here to tell us all about it. Good morning, hey, y'all. Hey. Hey. So nice to see you all. Well, well, it's been you know, a minute. I, yeah. I, I know it's been a while. It's, it's, it's so much has been happening, but I, I knew you, you you had all this musical talent, but I didn't know how much you love country music. Oh yeah, I mean music was like my first love, and I grew up in Florida, and I also was just influenced by all genres of music. My mm. parents love music, and I just feel like country music, the, the storytelling aspect is so special. And yes. I think I love to do that as we can we can tell yeah. from the TV show I happen to be on. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it just it just felt right. It's so interesting because a lot of people would think the acting was first and then the music, but it was, it's clear that music is a love of yours. Right? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, I was making tapes in my, my bedroom with <laughs> my boom box and you know, trying to record and write poetry, but. Oh, I love that. So what was the inspiration behind this, new, this music? Really like love, loss, the past 10 years of my life, like gratitude, but also really healing through the feeling. And for a long yeah, time, feeling. right? Let's <laughs> marinate. Yes. <laughs> okay. For a long time, I was afraid to feel because like, it's uncomfortable. Yep. You have to go through it, and the only way to go is through. Mm -hmm. So I found music always to be really cathartic, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's healed me in many ways. So writing and being able to perform the songs now is like a dream. Yeah. It's like unreal. So exciting. So let's let's talk about uh, this is us. Yes. You know, my wife and I. We just love the show so much. You wrapped it up a few months ago. Yeah. I read somewhere that you are open to the idea, perhaps. Of a reunion down the road. Uh, yeah, like 10 years from yeah. now. Like, yeah. How it's too, it it's too raw right now. Yeah. It's too raw. It's too soon. What it's too part soon. of the story do you think would mm. be the impetus for the for the reunion? Is there a part that, that left you wanting a bit more? Ooh. You know, oh gosh. I mean, the stories of people's lives like continue yeah. for years and, and decades. So I don't know. I think it could be anything. Mm. But it would... I love to see kids grow up and like mm -hmm. what Tess and Annie would be doing yes. and Jack and Haley. Right. I mean, obviously we know Jack, spoiler alert, becomes a really big famous music uh, guy, but um, I don't know. I think there could go, it could go anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I'm down for it. Okay. If Dan Fogelman's involved, Dan. then you're in. Then you're in. All right, Dan. Yeah, you yeah. put it out in the universe, so we'll, we'll check in in 10 years. Right. Um, <laughs> let's talk about your children's book because you're yeah. also an author. You wrote this with your boyfriend. Yeah. When I talk to God, I talk about you yeah. is the name of it. Tell us about it. Yeah, so over the pandemic, you know, people are, you know, really getting to know one another. And it was, I mean, the beginning of my relationship with my boyfriend. But, you know, you sort of talk about, like, do you want kids? Do you not? And mm -hmm. I taught preschool. I have a huge family. And I love kids. And I just know that it's so important, the foundation of, like, encouraging them and empowering them yes. and supporting them. But also we had a lot of friends who want to become parents, mm -hmm. whether it's adoption or fostering or biologically. And so it was really just the impact of like, we understand the desire to want to have that connective tissue with children and how important it is. Mm -hmm. Like as cheesy as it sounds, children really are the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it really just blossomed from that. that. Yeah. yeah. And, and you guys just celebrated your second anniversary. We did. Yay. Congratulations. Yo, we got through COVID We're together. Good. I know. Can that I believe wild. it? That's wild. Really, it's like we've been together for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> if you've gone through a pandemic yeah, together. It's like dog <laughs> a lot more yeah. than the yeah. And he's also a songwriter, so th there's a synergy there, too. Yeah, we've written once, and then I was like, you know what? I really want him to have his thing, mm -hmm. and I don't want to sort of taint it with, like, my ideas or, you know, and vice versa. I think it's really important for people to have their own thing but he is he's a very deep guy like still waters run deep so it's um it's nice it's great yeah that. well we're so excited for you thank and you. Uh, good luck with the tour good luck. Thank you. next time oh, come and perform here in the I studio know. okay all right okay we're already booked you. Love you. Thank, you. thank you yes. <laughs> i'm booked i'm booked great chrissy thanks <laughs> thank so you. much hey uh, chrissy's tour kicks off tonight in philly? in philly chanel's town yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you can go to her website for all tour dates and details. And remember, all seasons of This Is Us available on Hulu and NBC.com. Oh, my gosh. Have the best time tonight. Thank you. Probably just as fun for you as it is for all of us listening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I it's love beyond. It. I love beyond. it. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos. The learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody good, and that's it. Yeah. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Chris Ludacris Bridges can do it all. He's a three-time Grammy winner, actor, and record executive. And he's the man behind the awesome children's series, my kids love it, Karma's World. Inspired by his eldest daughter, Karma, the show follows a talented young woman who uses music and smarts to solve any problem that comes her way. Chris. Yeah. What's happening? I don't know. I'm off three hours of sleep, but three I am amped sleep? up. I've been working too hard because we've been promoting this season three and all the toys that are in the store. So I mean, you hear it in my voice right now. That's why I'm wearing the sunglasses, by the way. <laughs> First of all, you look great. FAO Schwartz is right there. Yes. It was filled with dolls yesterday. It's still filled with dolls. They're going to be in there as long as people keep buying them. So it's a beautiful thing. Trust awesome me. Awesome. And you got to share that with your daughter. <laughs> On her birthday, what yes. was that moment like for you guys? Because this was 13 years in the making. 13 years in the making. My daughter just turned 21, believe it or not. Oh what gosh. better gift can you get on your 21st birthday Wait, than to have? Wait, did you go out last night? No, no, no. We, listen, we didn't go out last night. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Not until she's 30-something will we do that. She can't go anywhere. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. But no, we didn't go out. Yeah. We, we chill. Um, you know, I love that it took time and that you said, you know what? Some things that are worth it. You yeah. have to wait for her. And it was a good lesson for her, right? Absolutely. So this, like you said, 13 years in the making, this is a perfect testament to making sure you never quit and, you know, just your dreams come true when you stick with certain things. And I like to say you fail better and better every time. So we went through a roller coaster ride over a decade of just trying to get this right. And I think that's why people love this show so much that's currently on Netflix yes. is because it's based off real experiences that she went through in her life. Wow. And so we're just so happy that it's being received so well and just this world and universe is expanding bigger than I could have ever imagined. But being 13 years, I'm glad because <laughs> yeah. I worked so hard on it. So now it's just, it's, it, it's a beautiful thing. I love what you said about failure. Like, I think it's so important to teach our kids that it's okay to fail. Did you, yeah. like, and you say you fail better. How so? Like, what, how, what has taught you to be better? That there's, way? there's so many phases that we went through with the animation, with all of the different characters, with how the script should go, with all of the music that's on, that, that's on the streaming services right now. Um, you know, we went through a roller coaster ride with going through different things and we, we failed. So we like, there was phase one, there was phase two, there was phase three. Yeah. And we just yeah. never gave up. And that's that is, amazing. that's what I mean. When you say the lessons learned in every episode, there is a lesson to be learned. And it opens up dialogue between parents and children, yeah. which is amazing because that's the way you can really teach your kids about what goes on in the world of today. And we need more positivity. Totally. And we need to talk to our kids more about what is going on because there's a lot of negativity out there. Totally. So that's what For this sure. show is all about. Totally. And you have four daughters. Four. Yes, say it again. Oh. <laughs> By the way, it's always like the chill dad. Look at this. Who's like the worst, like when you bring My a date God. home for the first time. Hey, 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 I no. feel like you no. are like, I feel like you are the scariest <laughs> one out of the bunch. Yeah, but it's also why I have three hours of sleep. You see, y'all saw that picture. Yes. Having four daughters, you're never gonna get any sleep. Um, can never. we also just say hi to your beautiful mom, Roberta? Yes, She's here. She is here today. So there she is. Oh, Look at her. Yeah. Hi. Hello, how are you doing? Well, we're doing great. You must be so proud of him. Every day. Oh, what has your mom <laughs> taught you? Oh, man, she used to teach me to write my goals down oh. every single year about what it was that I wanted to accomplish. And at the end of the year, she'd give me like $10 for each goal that I, uh, that I, that I accomplished. And the crazy thing about that is you have to have a compass in life of knowing where you're going. Otherwise, you're just kind of just floating, right? For so sure. if it was not for my mother, then this show would not be as successful as it is. 
And I would, I, you never know, like her teaching me not to give up and set my goals yes. is exactly what wow. this is about, Wait, goal orienting. Roberta, that's great parenting advice, mm -hmm. right? Like to, to own what you want to do and not, now look at you. It is, you but just... was $10 enough for each goal? I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I try to think well, about I'm that. I'm looking at your diamonds. You seem to be doing just fine. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I'm going to pay you, her back, by the way. We have to just say that you just graduated this summer. You, you said... Luda Luda cum laude. Cum laude. <laughs> I, need, I need to go in that program, okay, from Georgia State. <laughs> you got your honorary degree. How meaningful was that for you? Man, it, listen, it means the world to me because my whole family was there to, to watch that. So, again, everything, I'm just trying to set an example for my children and, you know, just pave the way for the new generation. It's all about just legacy at this point for me, and I, I'm yeah. just, I'm very... I'm very humbled and just very thankful for yeah. all of well, the love that we see. Part of your legacy is your music. We've been t talking and listening to it. Yes. And we thought, you know what? Let's marry your music with your children's book. Will you wrap uh -huh. a couple of the pages for us? Uh, no problem. <laughs> so let's, Daddy and me and the rhyme to be. So this is the, the dad and karma kind of rapping together. So one says the line, the other one finishes. So I can be a daughter if you need. <laughs> you, you may take that book and be the daughter. <laughs> so whenever we bake brownies, I'm the one who stirs the batter. And I'm the one who has to clean whenever the batter splatters. Whenever we ride bikes, he catches me if I fall. You're my car star. I'm always there when you call. Oh. Whenever we play pretend, I'm a dragon who roars. You know that dragon's breath will make a pirate go, yah! <laughs> yeah. It's Bring good. That on Spotify. <laughs> it's going to be the number one hit of the summer. Yeah, Chris, man. I know y'all are you're so proud of your girls. Thank you so I much. Am. And by the way, my girls love this program. So thank you for putting it out there. No, I greatly appreciate it. I think I can make an announcement here what? because we just said that, that because of the success of the show, there is now a season four no. coming yeah. soon. It's the first time I've said it. Awesome. Yes. That's great news. It's great news, but if nobody's seen season one, two, or three, they better go on Netflix and watch it right now. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It. It's really positive. As you said, it's putting good, yes. good messages out there in the world. Season three of Karma's World is streaming season one, two on Netflix right now. And check out Daddy and Me in the Rhyme to Be. Head to today.com slash shop. Don't forget, tomorrow is Friday. Jack Harlow will be here rocking our summer concert stage. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. We'll see you there. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today, we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor-packed Thai-inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was always a treat for me and my siblings to make frozen chicken pot pies when my parents were out to dinner and we had to fend for ourselves. And today I will be making a more grown up version of this classic comfort food. This recipe has some of my favorite veggies and I know your whole family will absolutely love it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our onion going. Look at that stunning dice. Move those onions off to the side to prep the rest of our veg. This is fennel, gorgeous, gorgeous fennel. Bulb, fronds, and the stems, okay? So I really love using fennel in honestly any kind of cooking. I promise you all of that anise flavor is going to mellow out beautifully once it hits the pan. We have these fronds here. We're gonna just give them a nice rough chop. So we've taken the stem off. 
And then I'm going to cut it in half, like so. We'll go from the top to the back, like so. And then rock it through from the back to the front. Let's quickly do our celery. And the theme here is green. I don't know if you can tell. All green veggies, that's what we're working with today. Okay, finally our garlic clove. And you also don't have to worry about chopping this too fine. So let's get to sauteing. We are going to add in a nice hunk of unsalted butter. We are also going to add in some olive oil. Once it is all melted and as it starts bubbling like so, that is when we know to add in our veggies. These will all go in at the same time. These veggies were really running away from me here. <laughs> okay. We want these veggies to break down, to caramelize a bit, to develop their flavor. And while that is going, we are going to get to work on the rest of our veggies because believe it or not, we are adding even more vegetables to this already full vegetation experience. All right, so next up we have our kale. This is lacinato kale, also known as dinosaur kale. It is flat, it's not as crazy and curly like curly kale. And my favorite way to prepare it is I will take the bottom right where the stem is, grab either side, and then take my finger and pull that stem right through. And there you go. Okay, so while this is going, we are actually going to add even more flavor with some fresh thyme. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bunch it on up in pieces, slice it thin, just like so. How about that? Fabulous. We're gonna get to work on our chicken. A great shortcut that I love to do is I love to use a rotisserie chicken. I am pulling off this skin just because we don't necessarily need it and we can chop this up. My siblings prefer white meat and I prefer dark meat with chicken, so it's good. We'll have a little for me and then the rest for my sibbies. <laughs> Okay, looking good. So now that our veggies are ready to rock, it is time to create what I like to call an almost roux. <laughs> so we are just going to add in this all-purpose flour, but it's really important when you add in flour to a pot pie, to anything as a thickening agent, that you take the time to cook the flour down. So we wanna just keep cooking this down for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's time to thicken this up. We're gonna start by doing one cup of the stock. We wanna make sure that all of this flour breaks down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna bring this to a simmer to continue thickening it a bit more. Next up, we are going to add in our kale to wilt it and to also thicken up our mixture a bit. And now that this looks nice and thick, we're going to add in our final ingredients, our peas, our fennel fronds, and our chopped up chicken. This is my favorite thing to do with a homemade pot pie. I love using puff pastry, store-bought. I'm taking a little bit of all-purpose flour and just giving it a nice light dusting. Open it on up. This is one sheet of puff pastry. We're gonna give this one more light dusting of flour. Take your rolling pin. The main thing here is to make sure that you roll it out so that it fits whatever pan you are working with. 
and we're just going to fold it, bring our pan over, lift it up, and then open it up like a book and dress it right over the top. You cute, you gorgeous. I love ya. We wanna make sure that we have about one inch around our cast iron. And you can just trim the corners off of that pastry. I have egg wash right here. And the reason why we're popping this onto the top and brushing it over the top of our pastry is because if we don't, what's gonna happen is our pastry is gonna end up looking a little sad. So we're just taking a pastry brush and really delicately brushing that egg wash over the top and the sides of the pastry. Okay, we wanna make sure it has some ventilation. You wanna make sure that you have at least three, maybe four, right in the center of that pie so that steam can escape. And then my favorite little extra layer of pizzazz is to take some flaky salt and sprinkle it over the top of this pot pie. So this is going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and just check about halfway through. Oh man, our pot pie has cooled. We want it to cool for about 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven. And now there's only one thing left to do, slice it up and give it a taste. And then we're gonna give this a nice big scoop Oh yeah, look at that. Mmm, it is unbelievable how food can instantly transport you back to a moment. It is just bursting with spring beauty and energy, I love it. One more bite, because we deserve it. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Local meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos. The learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. I absolutely love Italian food, just like everybody else. It's so comforting and it always tends to hit the spot. Now with minimal prep, my tortellini soup is just a thing to make at the end of a long day because it's just in one pot. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the big pot that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna set it onto a medium high heat. Next, we're gonna move on to the sausage. This is spicy Italian sausage. I think it adds a lot of flavor. Just remove the casing from the sausage. Well, sticky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> then we're just gonna put this right into the pan right now. Squeeze that sausage right on out, right into that pot. Right now, I'm breaking up the meat, so that way it'll be dispersed. It'll cook a little bit faster. Let's move on to chop up our veggies. So I've got some onion here. We're just gonna dice this up. 
slice it in half. And you can do generous chunks. There we go. Moving on, we got some fresh tomatoes here. Gonna dice these up as well. All right, and you know what? I'm thinking our sausage is about finished. Yeah, it's great. It's got a great color on there. We're gonna take a slotted spoon and we're gonna remove the sausage because we don't wanna take out the oil. We want the oil from that sausage to help out with the flavor. There we go. Now, since there's not a lot of oil left after the sausage, I am gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add in my onions and we're gonna saute those. You know I am a garlic lover and if you love Italian food, you gotta be a garlic lover too. Now, got some carrots here. Because they're so small, I'm not gonna peel them. I'm just gonna begin to dice them up as well. But just make sure you wash your carrots. Give that a nice stir. All right. In goes the garlic. Slide that on in. Give it another stir. And we're gonna cook this for about one minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deglaze the bottom of this pot. We're gonna do that with some red wine because we're fancy here in the Today All Day Kitchen. So grab your favorite red wine. I'm gonna be using a blend and we're gonna add about a half a cup. There we go. And if you wanna toast yourself during this recipe, I won't judge you, that's your business. Mm -hmm. Let this simmer down. And in go the tomatoes. I'm gonna let the tomatoes rest in here with the onions and the red wine and garlic. Let that simmer for a minute. I'm gonna finish preparing the rest of our veggies. Basil. I'm gonna roll them up, stack the leaves. And I'm just gonna just like this. Beautiful. That should be enough. I'm gonna reserve some too for garnish at the very end. Check back in on our tomatoes and onions and look at this. You can see how thick it is. It's kind of slushy. That's exactly the texture that we want. I think this looks good. What about y'all? Yeah, it can, it looks real good. Okay, let's start to bring everything else together. I'm gonna add in some oregano. Adding back in the sausage as well. Give this a good stir. And then our stock, pour it in. This is some chicken stock. Another pinch of salt, some black pepper. And lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle in some basil. Boom. If you want some heat, yeah, Kev, we want the heat, bring the heat. All right, some red pepper, boom. I'm gonna crank up the heat so that it comes to a boil and then as soon as it starts to boil, you're gonna to wanna to reduce the heat down to a simmer. Well, Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. 
This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. We're gonna take some kale. All I'm doing is folding the kale over, and I'm gonna take out the big stem. Take it at the very top, and just drag the knife along the stem. Comes right out, and then just do a chop just like this. This is great. Still simmering. Ready, in, go. The kale. Beautiful. And this is some cheese fuel tortellini. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes. You can cover and let this simmer. All right, I think this is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat of our pot and we're gonna plate this amazing one pot Tuscan tortellini soup. And this soup deserves the good bowls, okay? I'm just gonna say that, it deserves it. Get a big scoop, oh yeah. We've got the color from the carrots, color from the kale, and color from the tomatoes. Mm, beautiful. Let's garnish. Pepper. A little bit of dried oregano, if you want some. Beautiful. Basil. There we go. And look at this. Holy smokes. Cannot wait to devour this soup. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh my lord. That is a delicious soup. Now, I'm not team soup only in the wintertime. I'm team soup all year long. You want to come home to a nice warm hug. This is it. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline Missing in America. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I know making a curry from scratch might sound intimidating, but I promise it's actually pretty easy. After trying this recipe, you may never go back to that jarred stuff. I'm gonna kick things off with my curry paste. Traditionally, this is made in a mortar and pestle, but this girl is busy, so we're gonna put everything in a food processor and it comes out just great. So we're gonna first start with some coriander stems. So get those right into the food processor. Then we're gonna use one small shallot or half of this large one here. And I like to quarter it so it's easier to blend up in the food processor. So get that right in. And then we're gonna use four cloves of garlic. One Thai green chili. You could just take the stem right off like this. 
And you could cut this in half if you'd like so it's easier to blend. And then we're gonna use one inch piece of fresh ginger. Fresh is key. The traditional ingredient in this is usually galango, but it's not readily available, so ginger is the next best substitute. And the best way to peel ginger is using a spoon, because if you run your spoon right against the meat of the ginger, the peel comes right off. How cool is that? So pop that right in. Next, we want half a stalk of fresh lemongrass. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. And we're gonna get that beautiful lemongrass right in. I'm using one fresh lime. Let's get that all in. So then we wanna just cut this in half. You can use your hand or a little citrus squeezer and give it a good squeeze. And we have a few more remaining ingredients. We want some toasted cumin seeds and some toasted coriander seeds. Then we wanna add a pinch of white pepper. This is deceiving, white pepper is quite spicy, so a pinch is more than enough. And then a pinch of kosher salt. And we're gonna whiz this up. And just keep pulsing. Okay, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna get it out into a bowl and then I'm gonna grab my veggies, tofu, and noodles for the rest of my recipe. So we've had our tofu here sitting in some paper towel. We've pressed it so you'll notice that it's a little bit drier from when you open the package. So I like small cubes because I want them to be bite-sized and able to fit on my spoon or fork. Plus, if you make them smaller, then they'll cook better and crisp up. Okay, the next step is tossing them in some cornstarch. So you just wanna lightly coat them. Great, so let's turn our skillet on. And we're gonna wanna get this to about a medium high heat. Coat the bottom with some neutral cooking oil. I'm gonna start giving them a flip. This is what you want. This is gonna be flavor packed. These are looking great. You could see the color, the crisp. So I'm gonna get them removed and then start prepping my veg. First, I'm gonna slice my onion. We're just using a medium to large yellow onion. So I'm gonna do a quick slice on each half. So our onion is done. And next we wanna do one long red chili. These actually aren't that spicy, but they're gonna add a lot of flavor and they're gonna look beautiful against the green curry. So we're just gonna give a quick slice on this, just basically thin circles. Great. And next we wanna slice a green bell pepper. This one's a big one. So cut this in half. And I just like to scoop out the center to clean it up. And then similarly, we're just going to run our knife through it like the way we did for the onion. Great. And lastly, we have some carrot. We're gonna try doing this julienne because I like it to match the onions and the peppers. Okay. And now the one pan or pot magic begins. So we're gonna take the same pan that we used to crisp up our tofu in. While that's heating up, we're gonna coat it with a little bit more of that neutral oil. And now I'm gonna add in all of my veggies. Ooh, I always love that sizzle. Mm -hmm. So we wanna saute it for about five minutes or so. And to help with the process, we're gonna add in a bit of salt. 
The salt is gonna help release all of the moisture in the vegetables. Now that our onions are looking a little bit translucent, it's time for our curry paste. It smells so good. We're gonna let this cook down for about three to four minutes. Once you notice that the vegetables have softened and it's browning on the bottom, it's time for our liquids. So we're gonna add in about two cups of water. And some full fat coconut milk. And now is when we add our green peas. Stir this all together. And then we wanna bring this to a slow simmer. So while we wait for our curry to come to a slow simmer, I wanna talk about the noodles. So I'm actually using edamame noodles, which are noodles made out of edamame beans. They're super delicious and they're a beautiful green color. Okay, so our curry is simmering. So now it's time to add our noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles have some moisture on them. They're all covered with the liquid. Great. Then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna clean up some of these bowls and get ready to taste. Okay, so our noodles have been simmering for about five minutes, so let's give it a check. These will look so good. Notice that all the liquid has reduced but it's still nice and saucy and the veggies are still vibrant in color. All right, let's get it plated. So beautiful. I love the way the carrots look in this because they really add that pop of color. Okay, now for our tofu. We haven't forgotten about that. So they've actually cooled off here, which is great because now they're nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add some of our garnishes. So we have some fresh lime, some fresh coriander, and we reserved some of our fresh red chili. Look at this, can you believe this was made in only one pan? I just have to give this a taste. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm walking the streets of Bangkok. It's so vibrant, it's so fragrant. You should always eat with your eyes first. And this is certainly a dish that I'm eating with my eyes first. Good morning. Welcome relief. Overnight, gas prices dipped below $4 a gallon for the first time in months. And the new numbers just out showing where that record inflation stands this morning. Is the tide beginning to turn? Taking the